Hello. I've just decided to do a stream today because a bug fix for quite an important game has gone into MAME over the last 24 hours. And uh, that game is Contra, Konami's classic, although maybe you're more familiar with the NES version because the NES version is generally preferred over the arcade, but the arcade is nevertheless an important title in Konami's library. And up until yesterday pretty much it has always been broken in main um, i'm gonna show off the uh, the fix and show uh, start by showing the the broken version of course because it's good to have something to compare to so at the moment the, this copy of main down here is running the broken version and i'm gonna play that briefly so let me just um switch views turn the sound back up a little bit and there we go. Now, this is the broken version of Contra in MAME. So this is how Contra has been in MAME for, you know, as many years as Contra has been emulated in MAME. Um, you can play along the first level. I'm great at this game, aren't I? The first level plays as it pretty much always played. Um, you know, you walk along, you shoot things. The controls just aren't as good as the NES version of Contra, and that, that's one of the big things about this. You never feel quite as in control, um, but that's not what we're here to discuss at the moment, really. Um, we're here to look at a bug fix. But I've got to get to the, sec well, the, the second part of this level to demonstrate it. Uh, yeah, Kon Konami didn't really make the best use of the license, did they? Right, <laughs> I'm dying on the first level. So everything's pretty much normal up to now. Destroy these things. And we can go inside. And inside is where it starts to get interesting. Now I'll turn the volume down slightly for this bit. Right, so the inside is this sort of into the screen section. 
and the various obstacles, enemies jumping at you, firing at you. Uh, they, they always run backwards, they still do with the fix, I don't think that's a bug, I've not seen anything to suggest it is. Uh, but you get to the part with... Look, look at all the enemy bullets, they're going to the right hand side. Look at all the mines, they're veering off to the right hand side. Basically you don't really have to avoid the mines because they're just avoiding you. And a lot of the bullets you don't have to avoid either because they just fire off to the right hand side like that. Now this is how Contra has always been in main. You know, since the day it was emulated, it's done this. You can just ignore the mines, ignore a lot of the bullets, and it, it kind of makes this section a bit too easy, if you know, if you ask me. Because you're, you're not having to do half, half the gameplay. Although you can still just run into barriers and kill yourself if, if you want to. But there again, loads of bullets going to the right. Uh, more bullets going to the right, even though they've gone to the left. They're not really aiming at me half the time, are they? And the mines just going to the right. I'm sure if you've played Contra in main, you may have noticed this, I mean there's been a bug, bug open on main testers for many years, you know, concerning this. I forgot you have to duck here to fire that. And, uh, yeah, so, it's been fixed, that, that's really the point of this video, and I will be demonstrating the fix after I've, you know, got to the boss on this level, because, you know, it's the same issue that throughout that these uh, into the screen levels, the mines just roll to the right, the bullets go to mostly to the right, well, a lot of them do anyway, not all of them, but a lot of them do. Um, yeah, I'd say Car Carlo. Uh, there were quite a lot of bad Contra games. I like Hard Corps on the, the Mega Drive. That one's pretty good. Um, but otherwise, yeah, they're not always the best, are they? Anyway, that was the that was the old buggy version of Mame. Um, now, if I bring up the browser window, and what do I want? I want. Ooh, what were you to want? I think I want test screen recording with me. Uh, Disk correct? Yes, the, the chat's a little bit in the way. Okay, right, so this is um, the main GitHub. So, you know, this is where things get submitted, uh, the pull requests made. And one of the pull requests came in, which was add the 007452 multiplier divider, and that fixes the rolling mine trajectories in Contra. Uh, this was from um, Furtech. So Furtech also has a Twitter account, as I found out earlier, and uh, you know has, has been investigating things with the PCB. Um, and yeah, this was so that fixes this main tester bug that's listed here, and it's used in those 3D stages. I don't know if it's used anywhere else in Contra, but it's used in the 3D stage. Um, if you follow the discussion here, you'll see that the chip was actually already emulated. Uh, I don't, uh, why do all the black colours look washed out in the first level? I don't know, Carlo. Um, I think it's just the Konami colour scheme. I don't think that's a bug. Um, the, but yeah, the chip was also used by WC Le Mans and uh, Flak Attack and also uh, Combat School. So kind of the solution to this problem was staring us in the face the whole time. Just nobody had connected the dots and realised that the chip on Contra was the same as the chip on the other games, because this uh, multiplication division thing is already emulated as part of the WEC Le Mans protection, at least, and um, in combat school, its own implementation. And once it was identified that it's all the same, and the implementations can be merged, it can be made a common device and all that, um, Contra has been improved, the code's been cleaned up, and things are generally better. So, yeah, thanks to Furtech for... Spotting was probably in the end the obvious, but that sometimes that's all it is with me. You've just got to have extra eyes on the project. Uh, hey, hey, Santari as well. Good to see you. Uh, thank you for joining as always. Uh, I just just noticed you joined there. I'm just reading back the chat. Um, so and yeah, hi ETA and Carlo and Lit and Tilanus. Um, so yeah, I said hi in text and uh, Sebastian too. Thank you for all for joining. Uh, yeah, I was just saying the. Um, the way this works is a simple add addition multiplication chip. Uh, if we look at the source code implementation, you can see the code has been removed from some of the drivers and instead it's been moved to a common new file. So you look, it does sort of six different operations. Well, you know, you get you can get six different results from the multiply, the upper bits, the lower bits, the division bits, the, you know, the remainder bits. Um, and when you write to an offset, it does the maths. Uh, there's a special handling for divide by zero, which is confirmed what was what the chip record, uh, 
the chip replies with, uh, yeah, Santelli, this uh, bug is almost 23 years old. Uh, probably older than the game was when it was added to Maine. Uh, so, yeah, <laughs> it's been emulated badly for longer than the game existed before it was added to Maine, as is often the case with these bugs now. Um, I mean, the, we've seen the bug in other things as well. I was looking up videos of the recent uh, My Arcade thing, and unsurprisingly, the bug is present in that, but I'm kind of 99% sure that's going to be some old unlicensed version of Maine in that, because we've found those Dream Gear products before. Uh, some of those have had old, like, 10, 15 year old versions of MAME in too, when they're not meant to have, but that's kind of what these uh, commercial operations tend uh, are like around emulators, as we've seen before. I haven't checked the um, PS2 port from Hamster, because I don't have access to that and I've not seen any videos of it. Uh, so I'd, I'd say there's a 50-50% chance on that, because we did find with some of the Hamster Konami releases, they were also based on old uh, MAME. I think Haunted Castle was confirmed to have main binaries on the disc, but I've not confirmed the Contra bug on their pack or not. Yeah, uh, Furtech does a lot of impressive work, so yes, Darren, that is correct. That is correct indeed. And it's always important to have, you know, people like that involved. And these, I say, even if in the end the bug was staring us in the face and, and could have been fixed anyway, because the logic was kind of already implemented for other drivers in some senses. Though it's obviously it's a more complete implementation based on the the reverse engineering of the chip. Yes, so you know you've got all you, you know for sure which registers are involved, which ones to multiply, which ones to divide, and, and get a general idea for how it works. Uh, yeah, so Furtech did some very good very good work there. Um, so I, yeah, it's always good to see contributions like that, and they they help Mame. So. Um, I am going to now file the fixed version so we can have a look at that. So I will close this, switch my view back, switch my folder. Um, and load up the a fixed version of Contra. So this is how it now looks with the latest fixes. Now I didn't download that again. Now, there are still some bugs in Contra, which we will come to in a bit, but they're not gameplay logic bugs anymore. And that's sort of the, the key thing here. If there's just visual bugs or sound bugs, you know, slight sound bugs, the game is still playable as it was intended, really. It's just slightly off looking. When the actual logic bugs in the game, which affect the, the playability, like this one was, then really the game should have probably been considered not working until this point because it was not in any way a correct representation of how the game's meant to play. But, uh, yeah. Um, hopefully, the other bugs will be fixed at some point, but uh, I, I did see a discussion on those, and it's not as obvious as it was hoped, it's hoped to be. So it's something to do with how the Konami sprite list processing works. I'm just going to be careful when I press um, continue there, because that's when you can trigger the other build pack. Let's just get in here. There we go. So now we can go forward. Um, get rid of this. They still run backwards. I don't think that's a bug unless somebody can show me that it is. Right, so. Now, see, so everything's firing straight down now. You know, and the mines are coming towards you. They're rolling down the screen rather than veering off to the right. So you actually have to dodge them now and not land on them and jump on them like I just there. And the shots are coming down the screen forward as well and not all veering off to the right, unless they're meant to. So you can see it's actually much more challenging. There's a lot more to avoid now in this section of the game. So previously this section was far too easy. Yeah, that's, uh, all, all those really versions based on really old versions should be avoided where possible. Uh, I mean, people sometimes try and badly backport the fixes to them, but they're never done properly, and they often fixes allow other things being correct as well, and you just get a generally bad experience with them. But yeah, um, official versions are always recommended, and they're always trying to improve things. And in this case, yeah, it was an external contribution. A lot of the best contributions over the last few years have been external contributions, like in this case with you know Furtech decapping it, working it out, and implementing it. And even if, so, even if the uh, sort of the solution was staring us in the face the whole time, 
it, it's you know it's important progress to see and somebody had to do it that, it's as simple as that if nobody looks at it or you don't get the fresh eyes looking at things then they don't get fixed and this is one of those cases now i can demonstrate the uh, the other bug that's in this shortly i didn't quite get time there but there, there is one other long-standing bug in contra i'm quite bad at contra luckily for going straight in this bug i have to die so i can stand up and publish there you go right i need to die again go on Right. If you continue, okay, you can't continue that. I'm not even good at dying in these games, it appears. Apparently, you can't continue on that screen. Right, so let's lose some lives here. I don't like how you can't jump out the water when you're in the water. That annoys me in this game. Right, so if you continue on 10, it leaves part of the continue sprites on the screen over the everything else because it doesn't delete them from the sprite list. They're still in the sprite list, they're still being rendered and there's no obvious disabled flag on them. So until another sprite takes up the sprite slot used by the square on the continue letter, it doesn't disappear. So you're left with those trails on the screen for a little while uh, where the continue number was, which is kind of unsightly. Now, we don't have a solution for that yet. You see, it does it every time you continue. If it's on 10, if it's on a lower number than 10, it's not using as many um, sprites in the first place. So the game sprites already use up all the sprite slots once you continue. But when it's on a, you know, it's got a double digit number, it, uh, it does get left on the screen. Same, when it, same if you allow it to um, reach zero, actually, which I'll do now. I'll, I'll read your comments in a bit, Santelli. I'm just demonstrating this. Uh, so yeah, let's let it uh, count down to zero, and you see. Um, yeah, I mean, there's been a progression, hasn't it, Santari? From uh, you know private sources to get uh, to SVN to get. You see, there's some letters being left behind of square and a D on the screen there uh, after the continue the continue counter expires. Um, it's likely the same problem, you know, leftover sprites. Once the game goes back into the game again, those sprites are reused and the, the bad sprites vanish from the screen. But that is the remaining book that needs to be fixed in Contra. Um, but yeah, it's become a lot more seamless, a lot more um, open to external contributions. And I think we're seeing a lot more external contributions as a result. I mean, some of it's also that the, the project has always needed fresh blood, fresh people to contribute. Uh, I mean, you know, I've been doing this for, what, 20 years? plus 20 plus um, other devs have been doing it for longer and uh, real life starts to get in the way so you always need uh, people coming in to have another look at things people with fresh ideas and having a more open project with things like um, the, the github does really help I, I'd say um, so yes I'm telling you, that is definitely the case it sits a lot more seamless these days and um, Ray Ray Ross what if an issue appeared that, that you're not sure it's a bug uh, that happens all the time. <laughs> there are a lot of issues, uh, maybe bugs, and you know so we have to make note of them and try and find any kind of reference we can to confirm it. Unfortunately, finding references is becoming more difficult as the years go by, in some senses, because the boards are becoming less common, but at the same time, when there are references, they tend to be a better quality because we've got higher quality YouTube recordings and everything else so it sort of balances itself out we're no longer going on word of mouth as much because there are 60 frames a second high quality recordings and many games available on YouTube from real hardware which perfect uh, you know perfect way to check in many cases but also not as many people do have the PCBs in working condition to um, to check always uh, oh Um, are you talking about a specific book then, Ray, or is, uh, um, if you're talking about a specific book, then I can maybe comment on it, but, I mean, sometimes things do appear to get worse, but they're actually becoming more accurate to the PCB. You see that with some sprite dropout issues. Um, a lot of older, the old emulation didn't emulate sprite limits, so... The hardware, the emulation drew more sprites than the hardware could, and then the sprites limit started to be emulated. 
and you start to get sprite dropout that wasn't there before. Um, I mean, some improvements are not improvements to a user in that sense, but they are more accurate to hardware. Um, I don't know. Um, if, if there's something that's happening that didn't used to happen, then it's always worth checking it out. Uh, you know, trying to find an original reference for it. Um, there's a line that shows up every third frame. Um, that might be a partial updates thing if it's not syncing to the screen, if it's not syncing when it's drawing things. Neo Geo is a, a very rough one. A lot of the games are quite badly coded and uh, rewrite the sprite list mid frame, so that might be what's going on. Uh, some are especially bad, like Ninja Combat. Uh, there are a few slight timing glitches with the Neo Geo, though. I noticed that the bottom of the raster effect is still off a line or two on the viewpoint logo. So it's possible, but a lot of the games do have nasty tearing and other slight glitches on hardware. Um, so it's one way you'd have to really check and uh, make sure it's not like a recording from a multi-game cabinet, because that's one thing that's been happening really quite a lot lately. People have been giving us real hardware reference videos that are, you know, bootleg Pandora's box units, which are just old versions of main running on underpowered hardware. But because they look like they're in an arcade cabinet, people think, oh, it's an original game, and it's a bit annoying. Yeah, Ghosts and Goblins is full of bugs. Ghosts and Goblins crashes if you leave it about 10 hours in the track mode, where it locks up, doesn't it? I think maybe you can still coin it up, but the track mode stops running after about 10 hours. So if nobody coins the Ghosts and Goblins up for 10 hours, at least one, I think there was a fixed revision, but... Uh, at least one of the revisions will actually uh, soft lock after 10 hours. Not been played. I mean, if we're honest, most games are full of bugs. It's just a case of if people have discovered them or not. Um, most things aren't perfectly programmed. A lot of one frame glitches exist in games too, you know, where the developers might not consider the palette update is out of sync with the sprite update, so you get bad colours for a frame or a uh, frame appearing before it's meant to appear and a lot of those do happen on real hardware so it's a difficult one and obviously with Neo Geo you've got all the border glitches that s can be seen on hardware depending on the monitor used um, yeah games are very rarely perfect I'm just gonna have a, another little run through to show the, the bug fix here for anybody who might be joining late so, yeah, there's no, no real changes on the first part of the level. Anybody who's been here for the whole stream will have already seen me go through this. But, uh, hey, maybe I'll die less this time. You never know. So, no, 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 no. I mean, this is... No, I'm not dying any less, am I? Um, this is at least better than the Black Panther game that I looked at yesterday. That's still a bad game. I tried playing that again off stream and I still think that's a terrible Konami game. So, um, you know, unless I'm really missing something with Black Panther, that one wasn't good. So, let's get inside here. I'll probably run out of time again because I'm talking about the thing. Forward, forward, forward. So... Okay. And yes, for anybody joining, the rolling mines that you're about to see, many of these shots now appear with the correct trajectories because the math unit is now properly emulated on this. And thanks to Furtec. And this, this fix will be in the next version of main. It's been merged, the pull request. And the next version of main will presumably be the uh, last Wednesday of the month. As is always the case, I've not heard anything about potential delays this time. Everything seems to be going quite smoothly. There will be more sound changes in the next release from Aaron, uh, which again bring things under a better license and potentially improve a few things. Maybe a few bugs to iron out still, but uh, I don't think there's anything that's going to block a release. But there you go, you see. The uh, mines and shots now will roll as they're meant to, and so. Contra's 3D sections have the expected difficulty level and aren't just easier than they should be. I might play it a little bit longer. And then I'll look at some random games. I mean, we're, we're about 26 minutes in. Um, I had to say that the a selection of other games played on the street. So, 
Uh, I'm not. Uh, should I look at the NES version? I don't really want to look at the other versions of Contra on the stream because it might confuse people tuning in late if they see me playing the NES version and think the fix applies to that. So I'm probably going to avoid playing other versions of Contra. But I do have a little list of games that um, I'm considering playing. Uh, yeah, you could do lots of things like that on um, Ghosts and Goblins on the Mega Drive, Carlo. I used to have fun with it, you know, just running past the enemies and leading them to areas where they weren't meant to be and having you unload the graphics and palettes for enemies that were still on the screen. And yeah, that, I mean, that was the sequel, Ghosts and, Gob uh, Ghouls and Ghosts, but uh, yeah, I think it's probably just in the way those games are designed. They sort of don't take certain things you might do into account if you're really trying hard to break them. I should look at some of those ports at some point, shouldn't I? I should do a stream on ports. Uh, plenty of good ones. Um, just alternatives. Uh, let's say, if I'm doing April alternatives as one of the themes, I am still thinking, you know, of uh, maybe sequels and not different versions of games that were only on consoles or computers. Uh, that you might not know if you've only played the arcades. Things like Super Ghouls and Ghosts on the SNES. You know, it's, a, it's a sequel to an arcade game that uh, is an alternative that you might look at if you've already done the uh, done the arcade version to death. Hey Casper, hey RO9, thank you for joining. Um, I've been demonstrating the, the Contra bug fix. Um, so if you've not seen that and just tuned in, then you might want to look at it on catch up later because I'll probably be moving on to random games fairly shortly. But, uh, let's just beat this level if I can. Uh, Rolling Thunder is another. I'm not overly familiar with Rolling Thunder. So here we go. Let's have another 3D level. Again, the shots are coming more down the screen. The mines are rolling down the screen again. It's the same same as the previous 3D stage, really, in terms of what's been fixed. I'm not going to continue on 10 because that bug is still there. But, yeah, it's all a lot more logical, isn't it? It makes sense. You've got things to actually dodge now rather than then dodging the, the shots dodging you. Mine's dodging you. What's the music chip in this one? Um, 2151. There you go. So not, not a Konami custom music chip in this one. A standard Yamaha one. Anyway, that they say that's um that's Contra. I thought, you know, I'd, I'd go over the bug fix and you say huge thanks to Furtech for the work on decapping the chip, looking into it, analysing what was inside it, and uh, you know, making us realise that um we had already sort of emulated that chip for other games like Combat School and WEC Le Mans and now, finally, the implementation is unified and everything is a lot better, which is the way MAME goes. It's why, you know, sharing components, sharing emulation of components is so important once you've identified that they've been used in multiple cases because you've got test cases from the different games and it, it's cleaner code as well, isn't it? Yeah, the 2151 is a, a good sounding chip. It's one of those where the emulation was improved in the previous MAME release. Right. Um, from... A sort of run and gun to a another sort of run and gun. Uh, let's go with. I think this is the one I want to play. Uh, Gundhauer by Banfresto. This is on Setter Hardware. Now Banfresto, I think we've established um, form from Corland. Uh, put it in English, shall we? There we go. Suddenly, children disappeared from town. Secret investigator. But that didn't give me much time to read it. Anyway. Preparation for World War Three. Now, I think this is one that some people will be familiar with. Other people won't be. Gund have a... A very generic-looking title there, but... Uh, 
Why do all Konami games seem to use custom chips rather than system boards? Oh, this is a bit weird. Let me just uh, drop the volume a little bit on this in there. Um, I guess Konami like to develop their own. I guess Konami like to develop their own uh, custom chips. Yeah. And um, Konami also sometimes clearly went through stages of reusing old, um, you know, chips they had left over. I think Lethal Enforcer seems to be a great example of that. It's just an 8-bit CPU stacked up with chips more associated with the 16-bit games. And you saw that a lot with um, the gambling games too, the Redemption games. There's such a mix of Konami customs on them, it's uh, a bit silly. Now this is more your Mercs Commando style um, run and gun shooter, not uh, Contra style. Fast paced, and you, if you hold down your button then you can fire in the direction and move at the same time. Now this one is uh, popular in, in some circles. Uh, because it's, it's a fast paced shock troopers thing with weapons that are quite NMK like, I want to say. Uh, uh, maybe even Sabu like, bending sort of firing effects. Yeah, this is a good fun game car, uh, Gun Tower. I think it's got a couple of bugs uh, where it can reset in a few places, but I don't think there's any latent bugs. I think those are just game coding bugs. But uh, yeah, this is just a very fast paced shock troopers type thing. Uh, with a lot of bullets, it, you know, it's, it's a bit more bullet hell-like than um, most games of this type. So, quite a manic one. But, uh, yeah, if you like this type of game, this is definitely one to check out. This is one of the reasons I wanted to put it on stream. Now, this is in the um, all-killer game list, so this wouldn't fit in the current theme of you know the April um, alternatives. But this isn't uh, part of that theme, so for this, this stream, this stream is just um, Contra Bug Fix and a selection of games I thought I'd play, and this is one of those games. So look, we've got our bendy laser, very, very Raiden 2, isn't it? Hey, hey, I'm, hey, hi, I'm a gamer, how are you doing? De Devastator used 8-bit as well, uh, yeah, I think it did, Konami did like their 8-bit CPUs and often made good use of them. I mean, paired with a, a decent custom video chip, you can't always tell. Um, so, I mean, a lot of these companies did use lots of their own customs. And Konami even used the, their own customised CPU for things like uh, Simpsons. I think it's, it's still it's one of the 8-bit CPUs at heart. One of the um, similar to that. The, the, oh, I can't remember which CPU it's similar to, but with an entirely custom, uh, you know, entirely custom decoding and things like that. Which is why it's quite amazing that things like Simpsons are actually emulated. Um, that, uh, that's an achievement in itself, a story worth telling by somebody who's involved in it one of these days. Not a story I can tell though, because I really didn't do any of the, uh, the Konami work. It's one area of main that I had minimum involvement in. Konami and Namco are, are not really areas I did much for. Now we say more traditional vertical shooting on a bike. Um, yeah, this kind of this is, I think this does feel a bit NMK like, even though it's credited to Ban Presto, so it's presumably not NMK. Okay. I don't know. It also feels a bit like uh, Macros Plus. On a weaker hardware, but there are certain elements of it that do seem very similar. Yeah, the uh, Konami custom chip was used on quite a few games. Atari, yeah, the Atari ASAP for um, uh, Beathead. That's uh, that's another very much a custom one that I guess there must have been some documentation on to get it emulated because that. That's that's uh, completely out there. I don't know if that was based on some standard design, or if that is really entirely in-house uh, at Atari. I don't really know the story there, but yeah, that's just Beathead that runs on that one, as far as I know. Uh, must have been very expensive to develop if that was all in-house. And then the game never got released. Play some Splatterhouse. Hmm. That's a potential request, isn't it? 
Now this level just seems a bit plain actually. After the after the first level, which was fun, this is just almost mindlessly shooting bikes. Although the game does pick up again later. Or I think if you yeah, if you continue, you go back to the start. So that's not helping matters, is it? Checkpoints. I need to concentrate more to just uh, not die. And also pay attention to where my hitbox is. <laughs> not get bashed into things. After the bike stage, it does go back to a run and gun stage. At least I think it does. It's just a case of not letting this stage beat you. No, get out my face. Ooh, fancy car. No! Am I going back to the start of the stage? Oh no. Thankfully, there is, there is a checkpoint here. Uh, yes, yeah, Splat House is a lot of 8 bit CPUs, isn't it? Namco System 1 is. Um, I mean, it, Namco System 1 is 8 bit CPUs with a um, very advanced memory mapping chip to do all sorts of banking for it, so. and sharing of the memory between them. Oh look, flying pigs. Flying pigs that you juggle for extra points. Hmm. I mean... Yeah, um... There were other, other attempts to do Spy Hunter in the 16-bit era. Um, some of them didn't get released. Um, Sega's Action Fighter is technically a 16-bit game, although it's not that Spy Hunter-like, is it? Um, Data East Bandit that doesn't look like it actually got released because the version we've got at least is... Um, very rough around the edges and doesn't feel finished. Um, that's kind of Spy Hunter-like. But uh, it doesn't really work well to demonstrate it. I might put it on in a bit though, but I think it's marked as not working again because it's got all sorts of like debug dip switches that change how the controls work and how this works and how that works. And to me it's it's kind of obviously the, the build we've got was for some kind of test show where they were trying out different things and left the debug options in. So it's not even clear what options it should use. And then you map the controls in one way, and the controls don't work for the shop section at all, because it's not even reading those inputs. Uh, so, yeah, Bandit's a bit of a mess. I might look at it briefly, though. I think it requires analog controls, really, though, to be playable. Um, but, yeah, Slatterhouse is a consideration. Yeah, this, this likes to throw bullets at you, this game. Fast ones. Lots of them. Uh, this is gun tower, if... Um, but it says in the bottom of the screen, just that I, I kind of forget sometimes that I've got the little display down there. Hmm. Are we there yet? No, we've got a helicopter. So this level does go on for a while, but no, it is a fast action paced level. Well animated, well drawn. Uh, yeah, I can enjoy this one. I played this one a bit. Um, and if you've not seen it, uh, yeah, check this one out. It's one of those that I think gets overlooked outside of uh, the communities that know it already. Definitely better than things like Mathos Plus. Ooh. Ah, got me. There's a bit of sprite drop out on it, but I think that's just hardware limits. Where's it starting? Oh, it's starting me on here, so I'll try and destroy this helicopter before I move on. If I can't destroy it in this go, I'll just move on to, uh, yeah, probably Splatterhouse. Hey, Massinger. Uh, yeah, I've, I've heard there's a bug in the music on Splatterhouse. I'm not really sure what to do about that. Apparently it's not the sound ROMs either, because somebody dumped the sound ROMs from their board where it works. So it's not a case of different sound revision. I just lost it. Yeah, okay, I'll move on then. Probably not going to beat that boss today. Um, so, yeah.
Um, I think, yeah, you, you do, people tend to be polarised with um, Splatterhouse. They either really like it or they just think it's a, a shock value game with no real gameplay. I probably prefer Splatterhouse 2 on the Mega Drive, if I'm honest about which version I'd, I'd rather play. Um, Hunter VGM Rips, it was mostly developed by Illuma. Um, yeah, that's definitely better than a lot of Illuma games. Um, I mean, Illuma did the hardware for most of the set of games, so maybe that's just some mix up, I don't know. But that, I mean, it says Banpresto. Which could mean it's uh, the Corlan team. It does feel very like Macros Plus in, in ways. So it could be the same Banfresto team that did Macros Plus. Um, maybe the maybe the VGM rips is just says Illuma because the hardware's a Luma. The, most of the set of chips were developed by Luma. But, um, yeah, okay, this is Splatterhouse. I've loaded the Japanese version because uh, yeah, yeah, I think the Japanese version is better, isn't it, with Splatterhouse? From memory. I know on the, the uh, uh, PC six, PCE TD16, the Japanese version is less censored. I don't know if the arcade got censored. But uh, my general rule with games is, unless you really care about the story, uh, the Japanese version is often the one to go for. There's a lot to the Slaughterhouse hardware, yeah, like I said, the, the, the whole uh, memory management chip, which is one of the more complex parts of it. It's a, a complex system, the system one. And I mean, the uh, the video chips, I think Namco persisted with these video chips throughout uh, even the later systems. I seem to remember that uh, Nebulous Ray, with all the fancy effects going on, I think that's the same time lapse chip. Believe it or not. Hmm. Well, I'm clearly out of practice at Splatterhouse, just like everything else. But yeah, it's a run along, punch things, run along, punch things, or kick things, or use a weapon on things, or you know. For, face away from the, the camera for no apparent reason. Yeah, Namco liked to add extra protection chips as well to things, um, which was often a pain, but you know, they served their purpose clearly. Those are, those, um, PlayStation based platforms really did get a fair number of customizations anyway. Now, this is where. Yeah. Uh, Splatterhouse requires quick reactions. Happy birthday, Robert Gore, inventor of Gore Tex. Hmm. Cortex is a pretty good product from what I know of it. Comfortable, breathable interior for shoes and the like, isn't it? I probably have a pair of maybe imitation ones somewhere, but um, maybe even new ones, I don't know. So, is this the worst you've ever seen anybody play Splatterhouse? Because I'm gonna bet it is, but um, you don't come here to see games play well, do you? At least I hope you don't, because um, then you're definitely in the wrong place. And this is all the way back to the start. <laughs> that does sound like the sound effect straight from a bowling game, unfortunately. It sounds like you're hitting the pins in a, in a bowling game. My world record speed runs. Is that the, the speed to rage quit runs or um Yeah, Stride has a really good soundtrack. It's it's really strange that um Capcom made such a mess of the US release of Strider or the initial release of Strider 
shipping it with the buggy sound code that doesn't even play half the songs. I, I can't tell if it was a mistake or if they purposely censored some of the songs or taken them out of a version of the game. But yeah, that was one of those everybody reported it as a main bug for a long time when yeah, one of the, the Strider versions really doesn't have half the songs. It just reuses the same tracks on most of the levels. I do know of Galaxian 3 Mask Ninja. Yes. Uh, the laser disc hybrid 3D thing. No, that's not quite such a happy greeting, is it, Bob? Um, I, I, I think it's best not to talk about um, deaths here. Um, Maybe we could have celebrated the, the Margaret Thatcher thing the, the other week, but, uh, you know, generally don't celebrate assassinations and deaths and things. Um, I, I know that the Sparta House 2 on the Mega Drive, I used to be able to get the last boss, but not be the last boss at all. That, that always annoyed me, because I always wanted to beat it and couldn't. We're going to go back to the start of the level, aren't we? I need to stay on one corner and then punch. So there's a, there's a cheesy way to do it, is there, rather than just trying to play it like... Uh, what's the game you play in the Spectral game, where you stand in the middle and just hit balls that are coming at you? Not I, I, IK Plus has a bit like that, doesn't it? But there's a there's one where you... Something ninja or ninja something. Terrible game. I was trying to play it like that. <laughs> The problem with a lot of these Namco System 1 games is the controls are really laggy too because the inputs are going through several layers in the game code and it's really noticeable. And it is quite bad programming but Namco did love to use their IO MCUs and pass inputs from one place to another to another to another to another. I think that's what's going on with a lot of these um, System 1 games. Because I played um, Gallagher 88 on a cabinet and it was just as laggy as main. Not a nice experience, really. Um, go to the right, face left, crouch, punch. <laughs> okay. All the way to the right, right here. Or crouch kick, crouch kickable. Yeah, this, 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 this seems a bit cheap. Further to the right? <laughs> I can't even do the cheesy strategy. Okay, yeah, that, that is a bit cheesy, isn't it? Mm. Going with the jump scares there already. Stage two. That's quite a victory pose, isn't it? Damn. I mean, so I've not really ever spent too much time with the original Splatterhouse. A wrench at you. Played the PC engine port a bit. So, yeah, it's one of those classic horror games. Perfect for a Halloween stream, although it's not Halloween. Yeah, I, I worked that out, Carl, at the end. You beat. Uh, you sp hey, hey main, main fan, thanks for joining. And you beat Splatterhouse 2 after much frustration. Yeah, I, I think being a console game, Splatterhouse 2 probably did tone the difficulty down a bit. This is just meant to take your credits relentlessly. Um, that's, it's an arcade game, and that's what arcade games did for the most part. I'm still jumping into the same enemies I jumped into last time. 
Um, I'm guessing the PC Engine version is a bit easier. I don't remember struggling the PC Engine version as much. I didn't actually mind the uh, recent Splatterhouse game. It wasn't perfect. But um, I had a bit of fun with that one on the PlayStation 3. There we go. Let's go down a ladder. Without our weapon, of course. Yeah, I I, I, I did figure that out in the end, Carl. Uh, I figured, you know, stand up and... Um, ooh, let's get a stick. They've definitely gone with the reverby sound effects for the, uh, the, the sewer here, haven't they? You get these slow pace sections where... You know something's going to happen because it's just too quiet. Hey, look, we've gone. Um, we've gone all um, navy moves. The mines. Uh, move out my way. I can complete this without getting hit. No, I, I can't complete this without getting hit, Carlo. Maybe you can. <laughs> I can complete this by getting hit many times and probably putting on cheats. Back to the start of the level again. I, I, as if it's not tough. Enough. I hit you with a handle at least. Can we make friends? Hello. Where's the where's the have conversation? Let's jump into the void. The void sounds fun. So yes, um, Splatterhouse. I'm quite bad at it. I'm not going to manage to get to level two where the boss music is apparently. Um, the boss of level 2 where the music is apparently bad because I am not good enough at Splatterhouse to do that. At least not without a bit more practice. Um, okay. What else shall I look at? Uh, were there any more suggestions in the chat? Uh, yeah, Aaron. The, uh, the boss patterns probably are easy on the consoles. Um, and I think this, the inputs are a bit more responsive on the cons consoles too. Um, but for a run and gun, um, played Guanga um, not that long ago. Um, I'm going to play just a sports game. I think actually, um, Heavy Smash by Data East. Um, I could have a look at uh, Sinister at some point, yes. Now this is kind of a cross between football and handball of some sort. You know, you're running around, firing your shots, um, off, picking up the ball, throwing it around. Uh, a bit loud, aren't we? Let's turn it down a bit. There we go. Let's be uh, Brazil. I quite like this one. It's not the most creative game in the world. I have a negative in the stream. Um, I've noticed that on the bug fix streams, actually. I think it's uh, probably somebody who wants to believe that the ancient versions of Mame are perfect and doesn't like it when I point out that uh, there, are, there are problems with them. But, uh, yes, this one, you know, you're throwing a ball around. It's a bit over the top. Oh. Oh. Thank you for subscribing, Flash4. Um, if you're in the chat, feel free to say hello. And there we go. Goal! Just like football. Taken straight from a football game, I'm sure. Brazil are beating Spain in this futuristic sports game. It's a bit wind jammery as well, isn't it? In terms of over the top ball effects. Oh, that's frisbee and wind jammers. But Data East did know how to do a decent uh, futuristic sports game, I think. Under. Under. Uh, I used to be able to score a lot more goals on this. But yeah, if you, if you want a, a fun arcade sports game that's not just a plain sport, because you don't actually like football or... Oh yeah, there's a pass one too, I kind of forget that. It always helps to actually remember you've got more controls. No, it's no hold bar as well. I mean, you can just uh, run into people. 
And there we go. Blasted it into the back of the, the, the well, net. It's not really a net, is it? It's an end zone. What game is here, Booster? This is um, Heavy Smash by Data East. Uh, the d d game title and the set name in the bottom left corner of the screen. But it should be. Yeah, there. Two. One. <laughs> you didn't get a chance to throw the ball, did you? Um, yeah, I'll have a look at Sinister in a bit, though. That's a good one. I might even look at Guwango as well. I've got to play against... Egypt. Now... Yeah, you see, it tells you you can throw it into the wall or something, or... I don't know. Maybe it's telling you to run across it, like in a football game. Egyptian Powerball was too strong. It's a very Egyptian themed level as well. You can tell it's Egypt's home stadium. You know, the. Oh, my cheeky little attempt to chip it. Also, I like the fact you can just do flying kicks and do uh, you know, Hey, I didn't, I didn't try and pass it to you. It's a very um, hat trick hero in the sense that, yeah, just, just beat up the opposition if you want. The hat trick hero is obviously tighter. Oh, you can't do that. I guess you don't get away with that. You look like a frog jumping like that. Ooh. Do this with battle toads. That'd work. I probably need a better strategy than the one I'm not using because I have no strategy. Right, charging up to maximum and scoring like that. There you go. Now this is... Uh, yeah, I remember when the Datrice 156 CPU was uh, decrypted. That was a fun time. We were throwing lots of um, data tables around looking for patterns in it, and uh, eventually Nicola found some significant ones and managed to decrypt them, and then myself and Brian ended up working on the emulation of the various 156 base games. And fixing some ARM bugs at the time because the there wasn't much in MAME using the ARM CPU at the time. In fact, I'm not sure there was much, was there anything? Maybe one or two other games. And there were some bugs and uh, the 156 has also got a code processor, code processor in that does um, VCD maths and things like that. So it needed a, a bit of work. So enjoyable times emulating these ones. So I think a lot of them... You know, they, they hold fond memories t for me because um, I was involved in some way in, in getting them sorted and emulated and figuring things out with them. And as such, played a fair bit of them to make sure they worked. Although, again, we're talking probably 15 years ago now. It's been a while. Now that we've got gladiator type um, enemies. <laughs> well themed, isn't it, this one? Ooh. No, I'll give it all. Oh, that's <laughs> that was a powerful shot as well. There we go. Got the rebound. Who are you defeating, Mass Ninja? Or are you talking Slat House still? Now again, I think this one is on the um, all killer list, but again, that's not the theme of this one, this episode. This is just games I've enjoyed after the Contra book fix. Oh! But in a goal. But yes, I think Data E should have done more sports games. I don't usually say that, but. Um, they managed to do some really good ones. And they've got this one, they've got Street Hoop near you, and the rest of the Hoop series for that matter. 
wind jammers. Uh, their soccer game, Dream Soccer 94, was uh, not great. Yeah, it's. Um, I think it's it's kind of a budget system. There were quite a few budget-like boards that uh, some of the games used, and I think this was one of them. Clearly, they didn't expect it to be a huge hit or worth spending the money on the sound system for it. Uh, I'm assuming maybe maybe the arm chip was actually a lot cheaper than we realised too. It's curious that it was used on quite a few of these relatively simple boards. But, uh, yeah, just the just the two six two nine fives. Always sounds as you need to associate with a bootleg, really. But um, it still sounds good. I mean, they've done a good job. It doesn't sound too much like a bootleg game. It's not awful short sample loops like you get on a lot of bootlegs using um, such sound hardware. And it, it's, it holds up well, I'd say this one. Always worth a blast. But um, yeah. Now, I can have a look at Sinister. I've not played it in years. I can barely remember how to play it. Um, um, yeah, vertical. Okay. Meet Sinister. Blast crystals off planetoids. Pick up crystals to fill Bombay with cine bombs. Press fire button to see high score. There you go. There's some high scores. They're mostly zero at the top. So, yeah. Um, I like it. I've just never, ever been good at it, even after playing it a lot. Obviously, ideally, you want the proper joystick for it. It's not really a game to be playing on a keyboard. It's got a nice 49-way stick on the original. Okay. Oops, lost some planets a little bit. It's very fast games. Look, look how fast everything comes in on you. Now, in that sense, it's the opposite of that Williams Predators game that uh, still hasn't, you know, still not been given permission to add to main. That is like about 10 frames a second and really slow. <laughs> yes, I'm trying to mine crystals, okay? Failing. I wonder if this would be better on a um, pad, actually. Let's see. Yeah, it's a bit better, isn't it? It's a little more playable when you can actually aim slightly better. Well, not much. Yes, a freight train at speed. Mr. Argento. Argeno? In fact, you're chasing after like tiny, tiny dots as well here. There we go. Sinister is now in Scanner Beware, I live. <laughs> there you go. Speech is obviously classic in this. Up there with uh, Welcome to Your Doom. Use joystick to me. How did put. Oh, okay. Alright, I'm 5AB then. There we go. I hunger. You hunger. Let's give it another credit. So I'm just not really good at it. And you do want proper controls with it, unfortunately. One of those without proper controls, it's very tricky. It's already a hard game with proper controls. 
I'm gonna use this come off this. Anyway, it's not one I'm ever gonna get high scores on. So Um I mean a lot of the early building games aren't that fast at all. Uh, the, the, the early ones are yeah blitter based. But one of the one of the notable things for say Robotron is just how many slowdowns there are. If you don't emulate the blitter delay speeds, you know, how long the blitter takes. Robotron runs far too quickly. As it does in most early versions of me. Kinda like the uh, cave SH3 problem, but uh, a lot less complex. Okay, I feel chasing after single pixel dots is um, um I'm being a bit quiet. I'm just trying to concentrate on doing anything in this game that uh, isn't just dying. I live. So I am aware that you live. I Didn't stand a chance. I have 12 bombs. Beware. Sinister has 13 pieces. Okay. Yes, raw, like a dinosaur, a big metal space dinosaur. It just appears on the screen so quickly. I think I guess if you're watching the radar, you stand more of a chance. But if you're not watching the radar, it's like, oh, I'm doing fine. I'm dead. It's quite tricky just to play even with a pad, isn't it? Let's assume we've got everything mapped on the pad. It's practically impossible on keyboard. I can see why this wasn't on that um, all killer list, because yeah, you can't play this with a four way keys. You can barely play it with an analog. Yeah, I think I'm going to call it quits on Sinister after this credit. It's just too difficult to play without the proper controls, at least for me. But yeah, very fast, very smooth. All-time classic. No denying that. Just very, very difficult. And that's game over. So, I hope you enjoyed the nice sampled speech and me being terrible at the game. It has lots of positions. Yeah, 720 is basically impossible on keyboard too, because you have to do the spins. In fact, um, quite a few skateboarding games aren't really ideal on keyboard. Um, Sega's Top Skater, the Model 2 game, is likewise near impossible. Um, Let's put a game on that I'm not sure is emulated properly. Or at least seems a bit weird. Hot Smash by Kaneko and Taito in 87. Come on. Or versus Hot Smash. Or Hot versus Smash. I'm not sure. Now you select a table. And um, it's basically Pong. The thing is, if you move the bat really quickly, you do that, you move up the screen. And to me, it feels like is this meant to be two directional inputs that have been combined into one and the inputs in the driver? 
because it doesn't feel natural to have to really move the ball, move the, you know, move your input really quickly to move up the screen, because you completely lose control of where you are. But that's the only way you can do the smash. So I am wondering if the inputs in this game are wrong. Um, I don't think you can easily buy a native 49 way stick. I mean, even back in the day, there were only going to be a select few games that used them. I mean, when was the last real arcade game to use the 49 way stick? Was it probably Blitz, and even that gave you a joystick option? Because I assume they acknowledged that not everybody was going to have a 49 way stick. So, yeah, I don't know if the inputs are correct in this, because you really have to shake your input, you know, shake the left and right violently to do the use of the smash movement and that just doesn't feel natural. Unless that's the just the idea, it's meant to be tricky. Maybe that's how they make it tricky. Turn on. But yeah, did anybody want an update to Vision of Pong anyway? Um I'm not really sure. It's, it's air hockey, isn't it? I mean, it's one of those games that's just far better if you've got a physical table. An electronic version, a video version, doesn't really cut it in terms of the game. Hey, hey Edson, thank you for joining and, and thank you for thank you for the, the uh, positive comment. I'm not sure this is one of the good games, but uh, I wanted to have a look at it anyway. Just talk about it in case somebody out there wants to dig into the code and see if it's really meant to play like this or has a PCB or has ever played the cabinet and knows how, knows how this is meant to play. There'll be a few of those. Because I do like to show main issues on stream as well as things I'm not sure about. I mean, there was a comment earlier in the chat about what if you encounter a book that you're not sure is a book or you're just not sure how something's meant to work. And it does happen. This is one of those games where I'm, I'm sitting here thinking, is this how the game is meant to play? The worst part is the attract mode doesn't use the smash input at all. It, it literally never uses it. You know, it just hits the ball backwards and forwards in the calm and jump. Oh, it used it there. I said that and now it used it there. Last time I watched it, it didn't use it. But it didn't look like it had to wiggle too much, although maybe it does. Very difficult to know. But yeah, it's just a modernish version of Pong, isn't it? Um, what game are you talking about, Mass Ninja? Oh, sorry, I'm just going let me, let me scroll back um, <laughs> through the chat. Got void level way too hard. Uh, yeah, 49 way stick doesn't work that well with analog, or at least not the Xbox One analog. It still seemed a bit, uh, a bit floaty, a bit hard to. Play. Uh, yes, Carl Johnson, I've played Mad Motor. I showed Mad Motor on a stream, actually, um, because it's one of those we didn't identify was likely a prototype until much later, because it's got that strange mechanic where you can enter eight coins and just be invulnerable for the whole game. Like, it was, you know, it's, it's being used at a test, a show version, and they just wanted to be able to, you know, put eight credits in and show people the whole game for screenshots and the like. So yeah, Mad Motor is one of those that's very likely an unreleased game from Mitchell, and um, I did improve the emulation on that uh, a few years ago uh, when I was merging the Data East um, custom chips into sync you know, into a device file rather than every driver having its own implementation. Much as we just seen with the Konami thing, actually, where the uh, Maths chips being merged into a single implementation. Is the final boss in Shinobi named Mask Ninja? Um, maybe. I'm not sure. <laughs> and yes, Cal, you did hear Sinister. Um, okay, I think I've seen all the messages. Um, okay, so shall we have a look at another game? Actually, shall we have a look at one where there's a, a, a long-standing book that still annoys me? Since I just mentioned that type of thing. R-Type Leo. I like R-Type Leo. A lot of people don't consider it to be a proper R-Type game. I like it. 
I think it's a, a good game in its own right. Maybe it doesn't play enough like an R type game for people to consider it properly. Irem, 1992. Very stylish, great music. $135 for um, 49 my stick. That is a bit nice, a bit loud, so turn down. So this, yeah, this is our type Leo, which I think is a fantastic looking game. Smooth, colourful, deep rich backgrounds like we've got there. I do I do love space nebulas and the like anyway, so it's always gonna appeal to me. But you've got your multiple layers of scrolling, all the space junk. I guess it just doesn't play enough like our type for people to consider it. Because it, it does have to be fair. You've got your whole power-up system with the ball raising up the things. And also you can fly straight into bullets if you're not paying attention. But to me, I, I, I mean, I love this, this chaser mechanic as much as like the bendy laser in Raven 2. I just, it's just got that level of appeal to me. I was going to talk about a bug, so let's die. I'm invulnerable now. I'm not flickering. I don't know when the invulnerability stops. Now I'm invulnerable and I'm solid white and I'm not flickering. I know when I'm invulnerable because I'm solid white. But it's meant to flicker. It's meant to flicker between regular colour and you know the solid white colour and it doesn't. Depending on the frame you spawn on, you'll either be solid white you know, or regular colour. If you're solid white, yeah, you can tell when your invulnerability is going to run out. If you're regular colour, you have no idea at all. And that is a bug. That is another bug that has always been there in Maine. Uh, I don't know if it's always been there in other emulators that have emulated this game over the years. But uh, in terms of Maine's emulation of the game, that bug has always been present. And it really annoys me. And I don't know why it happens. And uh, so far, nobody has actually figured it out. Is it, uh, is Mass Ninja not the last boss is what you're saying? Sorry, Carlo, I've lost the context of the conversation. Or are you talking about this not being a real art type game? I mean, I like it anyway. Although, again, you can tell I've not played it for a good five or so years. I mean, do people consider R-Type 2 to be a proper R-Type game? I don't really see many people ever talk about R-Type 2. Just the original. Red Hot Dessert. No, Desert. Red Hot Dessert sounds good too, though. Nice bit of spice. I just love the smooth movement you get from the, the, the power-up. You know, the, the board side. Like, okay, go chase after them. Ooh. You come back to me. And they go off at different angles. It's satisfying to me. I, 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 the only way I can describe it is a very satisfying mechanic. No, I didn't get around to In the Hunt yesterday, uh, Santo. I didn't get around to Section Z either, or Section Z, after mentioning I would. Although I did check off, uh, after the stream, and it is one that's potentially playable on those streams. I'm gonna. S um, also, in the hunt is on the um, the all killer list, as far as I know. So I can't actually play in the hunt on one of those theme streams. But I could play in the hunt today because we're not on a theme today. So I may fire up in the hunt in a bit. After you know, I've shown the bug I wanted to show on this. So we're, pro we're pretty much done with uh, our type Leo. Really, I'm not planning on doing a proper long session of playing it. I just wanted to show you that bug that. One day I hope gets fixed. I mean, um, seeing things like the Contra bug fixed after all this time sort of gives me hope that maybe somebody will pick up R-Type Leo and look into this bug and it'll get fixed one day too. But it's another one of those that's been there for 20 years. and it, It's such a small thing and it doesn't make sense. Why does it happen? I know the sprite buffering on the, these systems is quite complex and there's probably something missing with it or the buffer's been done at the wrong time. 
Section Z has clipping issues. I'm guessing you mean on the original game rather than in main, because I think the Section Z hardware is quite simple. Um, that was our type Leo. But um, yeah, while we're on the theme, I'll put in the Hunton for Santeri. Um, yeah, section set on the hard. A lot of games have clipping issues on the hardware, especially on the edges of the screen. Um, things popping into view. Some of the Neo Geo games are especially bad for that. Uh, Cyber Lip is one. Again, we're a bit loud here, so let's go down and, and notch. But yes, in the hunt. Very impressive title sequence there. Again, that sort of sets the scene for what you saw with the, the Metal Slug intros and you know, the whole tank and the logo appearing. They've gone for a very similar thing within the hunt there with the very imposing logo, title logo. And yeah, this is Metal Hulk Slug, the full Metal Slug with some marines. And very good it is too. Yeah, it's a bit tricky because you've got very slow movement and that means dodging things is not always easy. Luckily, it's got plenty of slowdown to help you along the way. Nice chain explosion. But you've got your upper attacks and you've got your horizontal attacks. Power-ups. The power-ups look very much like the ones in um, R-Type Leo that we just played. So, yeah. Just the level of detail in the art in this. Oh, everywhere. It's just it's just a beautiful game. Just chain those and avoid the avoid what splashes out of them. But this deserves a proper sequel. And it got ported to like the, the Saturn back in the day, I think the PlayStation. So it's not an unheard of game. But there we go, lost a lot already. Look at the way the ship breaks up and sinks. The classic explosions. Not quite as refined as the Metal Slug explosions, but still you can you can see the level of detail in the animation. Yeah. You can tell it's the, the, you know, the, the same artists. Yeah, if you go to the surface to uh, shoot those, I forgot. You do have that mechanic. You can't shoot above the surface when you're below the surface, which makes perfect sense if you think about it. So it, it gives that extra dimension to the gameplay because you've got that line on the screen where the water level is. So if you want to shoot something that's attacking you from above, you've got to get up there first. So you've got to avoid everything to reach the, the, uh, the surface. So it's got it's, it has an extra dimension that most shooters don't have as a result. But you're two planes effectively. This is this is one of those all-time classic games you can find running main. I you know I I almost like this um, better than some of the Metal Slug games. So uh, contributes to some rising water levels. Already got a bit of burnt through a credit, of course, but. Um, Maybe the sound fits could be a little more satisfying. That's maybe the only criticism I have. It's not quite got that metallic clunky sound that the visuals would suggest. It's a bit light. Let's get rid of you. There we go. Yeah, pixel art is just beautiful. When jump done properly, yeah, no chance. Um, and gallops very similar, cosmic cop. I might put that next actually. Yeah, the explosions are, are really good. 
just so well drawn and they've used techniques that look better even better on CRT monitors you know alternating the, the, the uh, different columns with different colors that's a that that big explosion there's very classic metal slug you've seen that big one very vertical explosion in so many metal slug games You want a great underwater game. It is a great underwater game. I'm amazed at how many more underwater games I've, I've casually found while researching the other lists, though, that I didn't even consider for that underwater stream. Or, well, you know, the snow and ice and underwater stream. Water seems to be a big theme. Anyway, I appear to be just credit, my, credit feeding my way through this, so let's credit feed my way through it a bit more. And we can see where it goes. Yeah, credit feed, credit feed, credit feed. <laughs> Michael Bay the game. Yes, maybe can. And now, look, we get a really well drawn boss as well. Look at the detail. I mean, every tile is unique. It's not, nothing's just flipped around. It's impressive this fits in the wrong capacity. It does too. You look at just how much, how big some of the Metal Slug games are, and then you look at something like this, that it's really quite a small run. Again, you've got the, the same animation style where the things pop open and bullets shoot out, cannons shoot out. Just wish there were more games like this. Okay. Somebody should count how broke I'm going to be if I was actually putting uh, real money into these things on each stream. Like, you used £200 worth of credits today. How do you feel? Hmm. Maybe I'd like the games a lot less. <laughs> but uh, yeah, sunken town. Not going to play too much of it though. Obviously, it's still quite blue, but you've got a big storm going on. Look up there. Hide from the storm. The use of colour too. Just about see that sitting in the background. And look, there's a rose scroll effect going on in the background to, you know, show it's underwater. Uh, yeah, it's such a, such a beautiful looking game, this one. Say, it, it's tough as nails. Uh, you have to learn it, you have to practice it. Oh, you've got depth, you've got buildings in the foreground. Not obscuring the view too much to be impossible, but just enough to to give the effect they wanted. It's, uh, yeah. If you've not played in the hunt, play in the hunt. I mean, you're not going to find many better games. You can go through the whole library in Mame, and this is, this is easy in the top 20. Um, uh, I guess it's Michael Bay in the sense that it's also a bay where ships go unless that's the pun you were trying to make Michael Bay has his own bay uh, yeah I mentioned this just a minute ago Gallop Armed Police Unit now this actually has an undumped MCU but it's just used for um, sample triggering unlike in many of the M72 games, but it does need dumping at some point. So we're going to be quite loud again. Gallop. That sounds like Jallop, but it's um, Gallop. Mad car was seen in Zone A, rush to get it. Um, Cube Quest, I'd have to transfer the CHD from external drive. I've not done that, so I'd have to pray in advance for Cube Quest, Carlo. Gerald. <laughs> oh, yeah, I meant to be playing a game artist, not, not reading the chat. But again, you see, it's the same art style, same artist here as well. Same type of explosions. 
And this is this is kind of does have more of that original gun force look to it. I don't think the style is quite fully evolved yet. So you, can, you can get the idea of how it's evolved. See how it's evolved from the different games. So this is also a, a solid game. Very big sprite though. That is the one thing that will get you on this. Your sprite is huge. The side of it is marked arms. And I'm guessing they're not the arms of the ship. That's marked police. That's marked police then. And it changed to arms. That's marked arms, there you go. Yeah, it's a it's a game that sits in the middle, and I, apparently I'm even worse at it than that the other games. I, I, I love this effect too with the, the, uh, the numbers. They do it on the title screen too. But it look, there's lots of sprites to make up the numbers that then just move apart and fade at the same time. Very effective use of the uh, graphic the, the, the technique. And again, you don't see that too often. It's almost a vector ball effect but with just flat shaded single colour balls. You can have a laser too, yeah, I forgot that. There you go, see. Laser. It's not a bendy laser, though, unfortunately. No riding two lasers here. Half the laser. <laughs> Um, rotate effects in 83. Um, well, I mean, a lot of uh, cube quest is pre-rendered, isn't it? It's the laser, it's background. So, if you've got any amount of time to do the pre-rendering you want, then, it, you know, it doesn't really matter what the time period is. Obviously the technology probably wasn't available to home users, but in terms of things movie studios were doing, I don't think um, QQuest is doing anything that would be considered impossible for 83. This, this, this boss is one of the areas you can really see that classic art style. Well, you would be able to if I hadn't died immediately, but yeah. It's a very much a respawn at checkpoint game, unfortunately. So if you don't like those, you're probably not going to like this one. But if you just want to appreciate the very metal slug-like art from the same artists, then yeah, have a look at Gallop because it's really good, I should expect. And the laser just recharge, as you can see. There we go. The boss is down. Um, Fozon, yeah, the Namco game. And that's all pre-rendered, that's uh, not real 3D at all. I think one of the most impressive 3D games for me, not in terms of the gameplay so much, was the um, just the rendering of it, was uh, Fat One Blows the Sparky on the Spectrum. You don't really expect a Spectrum game to have proper 3D overhead view with everything, you know, different heights for everything in the 3D main character. That is really impressive for a Spectrum game. I might have to play that on the stream one time when I look at uh, home games again. Yeah, anyway, Gallop. Uh, I thought I'd look briefly at Gallop. Not too long. Uh, I'll probably play Gallop a bit more another time. Wasn't one on my list to play today, but uh, you know, these things do developed based on chat comments and you know in the hunt was suggested and gallop seemed like a natural progression of that um right i'm gonna look at one that had a bug fix last year i think i looked at this on another stream but um rivet 
Sega C2 game. Now this one is kind of um, a Frogger-like game with lots of nice little rhymes between levels. Um, are you talking about Cube Quest, the dodge section? I'm not overly familiar with it. Um, it's Wednesday, my dudes. Um, anyway, yeah, this game. Um, up until last year, it would randomly reset back to level one in main. And that is because there is a really odd protection check. Now, it's not using the protection chip for the protection check, although it does extensively use the protection chip. This is one of the most protected C2 games of the lot, which is why we kind of thought, well, is it resetting to level 1 because of a failed protection chip? It did check in that code. Did they mess up the program in the game and mess up the protection? Um, but no, there, there is a secondary protection in this game where they're checking how long a sample takes to play. They, li they literally send a sample command to the, the sample chip and measure how long it takes to play. And if it fails that check a certain number of times, the game will reset to the first level. Now, obviously on real hardware, that check is always going to pass because the sample chip is the sample chip. It plays the sample, and it takes the same amount of time to play the sample that they've measured. The only reason to possibly have that check in there is to stop people converting this game to run on the older hardware type that didn't have the sample chip at all. The regular System 14 or Seaboard. But it tripped up the emulation for, you know, many, many years. But, uh, yeah, from uh, last year onwards, we, you know, we, this is... Um, this is properly emulated, so you can enjoy the adventures of these two frogs, or one frog if you're playing single player. I also love that Sega logo. Uh, just catch every ant that comes in your sight when passing a spider, beware of his bite. So you know, how to play. Get the ants, avoid the spiders. So yeah, it's froggerish with big graphics and uh, time stages. That is such a classic time stage graphic too. That's used in so many games. I don't know if it's the first game to use that style of time Katali counter was. That wasn't good, was it? No, Costado. Contra was at the uh, the first half hour of the stream. Um, and there's only so much Contra I can demonstrate before, you know, just playing other random games. Which has Ribbit, which may amaze you to find out has frogs in it. Also, you know, I wanted to talk about a bug fix from last year, and this is one of the get bugs that was fixed last year. I think I already talked about this in another stream, but it is worth highlighting because it's one of those where people will think it works absolutely fine in older versions of Main because they played it for a bit and not encountered any issues. But you can play for 20, 30 stages and then get the reset to the first level if the protection's wrong. So it is one of those where the game was completely broken until last year. Really, because you couldn't play it properly. Touch the bud. I don't have any bud. Mm. Recalling um, adverts with frogs and Budweiser. Yes, the death animation is a little graphic, isn't it? I think somebody spent far too long on that. It's getting very excitable, this toad or frog. A river in summer might tempt you to swim, but the goal of the game is not to fall in. See, very frog. <laughs> Oh, 
I like how the how to play shows you what not to do by um, killing you off in the how to play. Obviously this isn't quite a classic on the same level that Frogger is, but it's still an enjoyable game. So lots of classical, classic tunes that seem entirely out of place. But this is not Frogger Cow, no. This is um, Ribbit. This is actually a Sega game, as opposed to Frogger, which is a Konami game that's Sega licensed. But obviously it's um, clearly quite heavily influenced by Frogger. But it's more of a time challenge per, per level. So you, get, you get your points by doing things quickly. When sand on the beach turns dark in the day, you know that a wave is rolling your way. So, yeah. Uh, again, don't drown. Because then you're dead, frog. I'm dead, frog. No! Not froggy go surfing. See, that wasn't a good time. I spent far too long. Anyway, you get the idea. I, I don't think I can play this for too long. I can sit on this. The water can't get me now. Probably not the best idea in the sea, because you'd probably just actually just be dragged out to sea, but... Let's pretend this doesn't happen. I've probably spent far too long playing Ribbit, haven't I? So I don't know how you meant to get a better time in that level, because you're basically um, constrained by the tide. But, uh... uh -oh. the last one. No! <laughs> it tricks you sometimes like that. There we go. No, I don't think the, the frog will affect survive very long in salt water either. Touch the mushroom. So eat the bugs too, obviously. Oh, the ladybugs, the ladybirds. It's a very cute game, isn't it? Get those because I want a perfect. I think I got a perfect. It's not the most difficult game. I think this was probably aimed at a younger audience, just based on the general difficulty of it. And also, the whimsical rhymes. A lizard a day keeps a doctor away, but don't let the conveyor belts guide you astray. That's kind of pushing it. Very cute until you die. It's suddenly got a lot less cute on this level. It's like, yeah, okay, why, why are the frogs on conveyor belts? Anyway, um... I'll probably quit playing this one in a minute. Oh, I got the best time. Well, anyway, the point is, it doesn't reset back to the uh, the title screen, well, the level one anymore. You can play it through without any issues. And that was fixed about mid to late 2020, I think. So it's a fairly recent fix. If you're in an old main version, pardon me, that is um, 
A very buggy game. Now I want to go with a a toe clan shooter, a dogion, just to demonstrate a little trick in it that not everybody is aware of. Now this is a really pretty game too. Good use of colour all over the place. Uh, a bit loud. Down the room a bit. But here you go. Right, so let's just play it normally for first. You think Rotterdam Termination Force made that into a hit GABA record? Hmm. I can't comment. Now this is classic. Well, it's not classic Toe Plan, it's late Toe Plan. It's one of the last games they did. Before, you know, bankruptcy. Okay. I'm getting worse at this game every time I play it. But uh, the weapons are, are great in this. You start off with this very powerful beam. I mean, that's, it, it's showing the ambition when they give you a big, a big laser beam as the first weapon you get in the game. And you power it up a bit. But there's lots of beams in this game, and maybe that's one of the downsides because beam attacks can be a bit unfair at times. But there are lots of beams in this game. Look at that lay. This is one of those that's got dual VDPs as well, so it's you know it's double power. Here we go. Here's our, our bendy laser. Not quite an arriving two laser, but one a homing laser. Yeah, very impressive. Bright red. Also, Topan soundtrack really works. I was so happy when the music got emulated and the sound effects got emulated in these games because they have some of the best sound effects. Let's power that up a little bit. No, is that power? No, it's just something. Okay, it's called Poing. Why does doggy and malfunction after you enter the fifth loop? Uh, ask somebody who knows how to enter the fifth loop. I don't know. I, d I wasn't even aware that it malfunctions after you enter the fifth loop. I'm guessing it's a programming oversight. In what way does it malfunction? It surprises me, but um, if you read the story of how things were developed at uh, Toplan, it was uh, very hectic. I don't know if all sets would malfunction in the same way. There are quite a lot of sets in May. I will be demonstrating one of the other sets in a bit too. But you can see it's a really impressive looking shooter. With its own art style. It's a very different art style to the Iron games we looked at earlier. But it's still... It's got a very organic look. Everything's very curvy. It's not a case of, you know, big sharp edges like you see in a lot of shooters. Look at all the curves on this boss, for example. And again, you've got your bendy laser here now, the purple one. Very curvy. I think that's what I like about the art style here. It's not just based around sharp corners, mechanical looking boxes. I mean, th what's it? This looks like a big cleaning robot. <laughs> um, with, you know, little cleaning pads on. But, um, very creative. Anyway. Choice pad. But, um, anyway, the um, yeah, toe plan were great with the FM chips. Uh, Santo. Right. What I wanted to demonstrate on this one is if if I can pull this off. Now you got a tractor beam in this. If you start a two-player game, I didn't even show the tractor beam before, did I? Now, um, but you got your tractor beam on the third button. You can pick up the other player if you do it right. There we go. And now I've picked up the other player. And both player ships are combined, so this is with two credits only. But I've got a super powerful ship because it I picked up the, the other player ship with the tractor beam. So player two ship is now riding on my back and I'm getting the player two firepower with one joystick. So as long as you can pull that off without dying and you're willing to put in two credits each time you want a new life. But I think if, if you lose a life you separate, you have to pick the player off again. But you see I've got a super powered ship. Um, yeah, you know, okay, I can lose a life and keep the superpower. Okay, I thought you had to rejoin it. I think if you continue, you have to rejoin it. There you go, you see. 
overpowered ship with two credits. There aren't many games that do that. Um, Atari's Blasteroids is another one where you can join the ships together, I believe, because if you transfer one, the biggest ship, one to the smallest ship, you can link them together and have a turret on the, the bigger ship. There you go, you see, yeah, I have to, re I have to redo it if I want it again, so. Then you have to not die while you're picking the other ship up. There you go. Obviously, Gallagher's got the novelty where you can get your second ship back if you let it get captured. That's a bit different because that's still a single player life. You don't put two credits in to get that. That's a, a gimmick in the game. Um, I've no idea what uh, dev kits were used for Terraplan. Carlo. And uh, these, things, these things aren't always publicly documented. It wouldn't surprise me if it was the sharp systems. Although, maybe this pushes would have pushed them a bit too hard. I mean, there's a lot of layers here, a lot of graphics. I'm not sure. And so this is a doubled up VDP game. This is an expensive board. Probably didn't help with <laughs> Toplan's solvency. When you hear that, when you hear that, like, uh, Batsuit 2 wasn't released because they went bankrupt at the time. Oh yeah, you got your speed up. Your second button speed up, so you can move around more quickly, uh, and you can lose the other player if you drop them. If you press the third button again, that was silly, wasn't it? Come on, I want, I want to. I want to. Re uh, okay, I'm not going to. Can you move the big ship back? There we go. So I've got four beams now. We've got a big ship. So. Stage one completed. I, I do really like this one. I'm not good at it, but I really like it. Yeah, the weapon effects are very impressive, Alan. And that's one of the things that appeals to me. Look, look, you talk about the Raiden 2 bendy laser, but this is a bendy laser of its own, isn't it? Look at the pattern when there's nothing to home in on it. It, it just makes... But you see how I'm running into the enemies and instantly dying. Now, if I load the right set... Location test, I think this is the one. Yeah, Capcom used it uh, for CPS. Pardon me, Carlo. Yeah, um, I did hear there were counter stop bugs in it, Cal, so it, it um, makes sense. I, I mean, uh, lots of games have exploits, things that the programmers didn't consider. People found them over the years. Um, I think if you're playing the games fairly, you, you try not to do them. Now, if I'm correct, this one has an auto bomb mechanic. No? Which one's got. One of the sets, I'm sure, has got an auto bomb mechanic. Not this one. Um, okay, I'm confused now. I'm, I'm sure one of these sets had an auto bomb. Uh, maybe it wasn't this one. We'll see. Auto bombs when you keep the bomb power up. Ah. Okay. Yeah, I knew the one had the auto bomb. I just forgotten the mechanic on it. But it's 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 unique to the prototype. It doesn't do it on the release version. It's just been so long since I've um, played it. I can't. I can't even remember how the bomb mechanic works on the game. But yeah, uh, well, I not probably not probably best I don't try and show that off now. But yeah, if you played the location test version, I think it is the one I just loaded. Oh. Uh, you do get an auto bomb that you don't get on the release version. Uh, yeah, there's only two clones of it, so it would be that location test version that has that. And again, there weren't many games that did auto bombs. It's it's not something that was common at the time. A lot of the games since have done it, but um, in terms of games, you know, back then, not many did auto bombs. And I guess it can't have gone down too well in the location testing because it did get taken out of the game. The you know the final version does not auto bomb. So again, total on time ideas and. I'm really glad that location test version is dumped because you get to see that in action if you know how to play the game. I used to know how to trigger it, but it's been a good few years. Um, shall we go back to some...
classic 82 SNK lasso 82 oh, I, I didn't realize this was so early oh, I'm more impressed by this one actually so this is another game where you kind of surround um, things you're trying to pick up but in a different way you don't have control over the drawing of the um, surround here but you do have control over the timing and yeah I thought this was like about 85 so I'm actually more impressed now that this is 82 almost 40 years since this game came out yep amazingly it's almost 40 years since this game came out so face in direction of animals, don't move cowboy, press off the button for length of rope and release to form loop. It gives you a little tutorial. So you know, again, how many games let you practice before playing? It seems like quite a, a unique feature of 82. Yeah, so hold it down, release it, got two in one. Now, I, I've said, you know, not all of the SNK games impress me, but this one, this one does. <laughs> Just because it's trying to do something different. <laughs> Again, I did this absolutely fine earlier. You now you're rounding up your sheep, you're getting in your little circle. And I, I don't think there's anything else with this exact gameplay. I mean, I know Red Dead Redemption's got its lasso mechanics. That's a little bit more recent. It's not not an almost 40-year-old game. Yeah, if you move, then you, you cancel the lasso. So it's a game. It's a risk-reward type thing. You can stay in one place, but then the dogs will get you. So you have to you have to you know think: Do I want to actually try and get this, or do I have to move? If you move at any point, you lose your lasso. So there we go. Now you can obviously group the dogs, like as you're seeing there. Uh, but if you walk into the um, snakes, I'm assuming they kill you. So yeah, why didn't this get a sequel in Neo Geo? This could have done quite well. A modern 16 bit version of the Lasso. I mean, I'm not sure how they'd really innovate the gameplay too much, so that's probably the problem, isn't it? But yeah, two years after Pac Man. I got caught. The end. It's much better presented than a lot of early SNK games too. It doesn't have the silly high scoreboard stuck in a track mode with the end your initials text or anything like that. It's um Can you turn the screen off? Yeah you can turn the, the, the warm screen off or put it in German. <laughs> That's an, uh, an unusual alternate language. Although there were a few German sets of SNK games back then. It's possible this is a set that was for Europe slash Germany then. Because um, I would have expected the alternate language to be Japanese, if anything. Uh, though we do see quite a few German sets. Uh, the Taito Midnight Landing is English slash German. Th these days you don't really consider Germany to be a big arcade market. I and mean, it's not like Italy where we're finding boards all the time. You know, rare prototypes. Not much shows up in Germany. And I can't off offhand s tell you of any rare German prototype discoveries. Yeah, with Berserk and Wizard of War, I played the German versions on Stream Wolf as because I actually really like how they sound in German. Uh, Gorf too. In fact, I think I played the German Gorf. I don't know if I played the German Wizard of War. Yeah, I think I did. Two. Oh, didn't quite. 
no, 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 ah, I ran into the steam water, whatever it is. I don't know why there's a blue line at the bottom of the screen, that does look a bit off, but um, that might just be how it is. Uh, yeah, the original Prehistoric Isle is a great game, Mass Ninja. I much prefer it over the, the sequel and the MVS. The sequel is kind of, eh. I was really looking forward to that sequel too, but then once I played it, it was like, no. It doesn't really capture the original spirit of the game. It is nice, it's got the uh, rescue scenes and things like that, but it's ugly pre rendered Saras stuff, isn't it? UQ. UQ, Mobo, whatever they're called, and the Saras. Uh, that's what I'm wondering, Wolfass. I, I mean, this is 82. I can't think of many games from 82 with tutorials. Um, at least not play the tutorial. Maybe there were other ones. But it's definitely a contender for the earliest one, if it isn't the earliest one. Um... Alright, so I played that a little bit. I might play that on another stream. I actually want to stick with... Uh, SNK. SNK in 82. Pioneer. Balloon. So. I'm a bit more primitive on the sound. And um, let's get the bounce right. No, you're just bombing things with a balloon. I don't know if this, it, this feels like there's meant to be a gradient background to me, but maybe there isn't. Looks a bit plain. I'm not going to play this one for long. It's kind of similar in the sense that it presents the end with the end. I'm just kind of reminded in terms of the presentation between the two games. There are similarities. Uh, Language. This one's got the alternate language of Japanese, not German. Um, the, the CRT shader by default doesn't crop the edges. When I'm running the Neo Geo games, I'll stretch it manually. Again, Carlo, I, I don't really know why they'd reuse the same music on two games, but it happened. Is it a classical piece, or is it just a composition they reused? That's the first thing I'd be asking myself. Is it actually a piece of their original music, or is it just one they reused? Now, this, prob this isn't as creative as an innovative is innovative as a um, lasso. It's just a, a bomb-based shooter, isn't it? But it's also an SNK game from 82. And it does remind you that SNK were around a long time before the Neo Geo. But most of the early SNK games just tend to get overlooked or forgotten. But they were there. This is actually a bit unfair, I find. Everything fires at you very quickly. You don't get much chance to dodge anything. Stay high up on the screen, you might stand more of a chance, but then the birds are pushing you down the screen. But yes, um, a hot air balloon with an unlimited supply of ammo seems a little unrealistic. I mean, I, I would surely be losing height at the amount of weight I'm dropping out of this... No, gaining height at the amount of weight I'm dropping out of this balloon. Um, 
another film OST here. Maybe, maybe. Um, again, this is, it reminds me of somewhere in the previous game. Maybe just the fact it says the end when you die, which is fairly unconventional, but it's not one that's worth spending too much time on. Right. Um, we're two minutes, two, two minutes, two, two hours, six minutes into this stream. I'm going to play a few more games. Maybe we'll reach three hours, maybe we won't. Um, well, I like Lasso that I just played, Carlo. I wouldn't say that was pants. There are some okay SNK games, early ones. They're just, they're very average in general. I mean, I, I think SNK in general were. They just sort of got lucky with things like the Neo Geo and rode on a wave of creating popular fighters for a while. But... Yeah, I don't know. I think a lot of the best Neo Geo stuff was third party. Enigma 2. Um, I think this is by Zilek. Uh, it says Game Plan licensed it. I think it's by Zilek, UK company. So if you look at the logo on the ship, it said Z Enigma 2. Z E being Zilek Electronics, as you're seeing scrolling at the bottom. It's a Space Invader-ish hardware game. This, this specific set, I don't think it's Space Invader hardware. But, um, oh, in front of it. Oh, it. So it's um, shoot the invaders. You've got a thrust button where you can move off the bottom. They drop bombs. Oh, it's not too bad actually. Obviously, it's not a classic Space Invaders game. It's not a Taito game. It's a game made by a, probably a little UK company. That I am doing badly at. I think you burn up fuel by going up the screen. So you do have to, uh, you know, choose when to do it. It also helps not to be on the bottom where there are bombs that get dropped by the um, aliens. And I failed to complete the first level. I don't wish that to my initials. Although it is the high score, so... Now you can shoot as fast as you want, but it automatically gets rid of your previous bullet, which is one way of dealing with it. So if you want a short range attack, you fire you hammer the fire button. Which can be a strategy. I mean, if you fire in the wrong place, it's it's better this way because you can fire a new shot where you actually wanted it to be although you can end up cancelling your shots when you didn't want to cancel your shots um, again once you get into the rhythm of this game it's alright uh, if you're not then you're going to die a lot look how quickly these things are moving down though. they're kind of homing on you with their up down movements hey Christian how are you doing thank you for joining um, so yeah I've um, failed on this stage Oh, come on. Now, I think people for a while did think this was a Taito game. I, I saw it in some lists of undone Taito games back in the day. Probably because there were conversions for Space Invaders hardware that ran this game. Uh, same with the Vortex, the Asteroids ripoff. I think it was also Zilek. That was this as a Taito game in many places, but it, it's not a Taito game. These are very aggressive enemies, actually. I wonder if the clone set's less aggressive. There we go. I completed the level. Now we've got space spiders. Well, I think they're not spiders. They're birds, aren't they? Like Phoenix. Well, they look kind of spidery like, when they first appear. Space bats, maybe. Let's have another credit. Oh, yeah. This is one of those enjoyable but nothing to write home about. Invaders type games that plays a bit differently because the primary movement of the invaders is up and down, so it gives it a distinctive 
video. You fly away. Oh, I can't fly away. I've been far less aggressive now. I'm wondering if it ranks it. So if you fail enough times, it gets it. Easy, uh... I wonder what the first game with rank is actually, that, that, that'd be a thing. I, maybe this probably isn't ranking things, it's probably just me getting better at the game. But I do wonder what the first game with rank would be. Because that's one of those hidden mechanics, you can't just say, oh yeah, it's the first game with a tutorial screen, because you don't really know which games are behind the scenes, adjusting their difficulty based on play. So yeah, you've got to move out the way horizontally. I'll give it another credit or two. Yeah. I should probably give the uh, the Contra bug fix one last look before I close the stream as well for anybody joining late who didn't see the early part of the stream. Actually, I might do that next, even though you know, the, the uh, early joiners will have seen it, um, but the late joiners will not have done. So, I'll probably do a quick one over that bug fixing it. In fact, I'll do that now. Yeah, it's pretty fun. It's, it's quite punishing. I'm quite bad at it, but um, again, it's got, I think it's a UK company, so it's going to have that spectrum look. But yeah, for the late joiners, I'm going to put on the old version of Main with Contra. So this is the old version of Main running Contra, and I'll show you the bug. Um, so, run along. Don't get blown up by the bridge. You'll probably end up getting blown up by something else, because I'm really bad at Contra. So. That waterfall not animating seems really lazy as well. I'm sorry, that, that bugs me in Contra. That waterfall should just be animated. Static backgrounds are bad. I'm sure I died exactly there last time I did this too. Trying to rush it. Never mind. There we go. Um, I didn't even realise Zevius had rank, Bob. Um, I've never been a big fan of Zevius, but... Um, it could be one of the earlier ones. I don't know. Right, see the enemies firing to the right quite often? That's a sign of the bug. Everything veering to the right. Look, all the shots going to the right. The mines all going to the right. This is how Contra has been in Maine for over 20 years. It is wrong. Things are not meant to head to the right. It makes it far too easy. You don't have to avoid most of the shots because they just go to the right. Look. The mines, unless you're standing at the very right edge, the mines will never hit you. Those shots will never hit you. It's really easy. Because the emulation is broken. So any high scores created in old versions of main are 100% invalid. Because the emulation is just that broken. And this theme will continue throughout all the year uh, into the screen levels. I mean, I didn't. I, I, did, I barely saw enough arcades to do anything like that, and I was a kid, Carlo, so. Um, no. Anyway, you can see the issue. Pardon me. All the mines veering off to the right. All the shots, well, most of the shots veering off to the right. So, let's put the uh, fixed version on with Vertex Fix. And again, we blast our way through the first level. Power up. Don't blow me up, bridge. Don't blow me up here either. Same place, I think. There we go. I'm pretending I can play this game. So this is the fixed version. Nope, the shots are aimed at me. Straight down the screen, at me. 
not veering to the right. Mines roll down the screen. They don't veer to the right. So, yeah, this is the fixed version. This is now much more difficult because you actually have to avoid things. They're not avoiding you. So, next version of main Contra will have the correct gameplay logic for these sections. At least as far as we know the correct gameplay logic for these sections. The math chip is now emulated. The calculations are going through the math chip. It was done by studying decaps of the hardware and also it, you know, it agrees with previous findings for the other games using the same chip that we didn't realise with the same chip back then. Um, so Weckley Mons, do you see the Mons um, Combat School? And uh, what was the other one? I can't remember, there was another one. Um, surprise Attack, Flak Attack, even. I suppose that. Although Flak Attack apparently doesn't even care what the results are from the chip, so. I don't know, at least not in any, any capacity anybody's noticed. But yeah, that's the uh, the Contra bug fix that I um, mentioned at the start of the stream and what the stream is really all about. Uh, so yeah, uh, you've got Furtech to thank for that and that will be in the next main version. And it's a, yeah, it's a very impressive fix because um, sort of 20 odd years of the game not working isn't ideal. But people put in the effort to research these things and fixes get found, fixes get put in. So... Yeah, it's a pretty big fix, Alan. I mean, I'm always happy to see the classic games fix like that, and it ju it just shows you if you're trying to use the old versions of MAME, you're going to encounter all sorts of bugs like that because there's so many little things like that fixed over the years. Um, what's the game? A Battle Lane Volume Five from Technos Tato Tato License. Um, a dink from the final burn neo team submitted a fix uh, earlier in the month and that only affects the final boss but the final boss rendering was incorrect there that's not a gameplay logic book so it's not as critical as the contra one because the game actually played correctly just the final boss didn't render correctly but again, that's another one that's gone in this month that'll be in the next release i I would have demonstrated that but it's the final boss. Uh, I'd probably have to make a save state on that one at some point to demonstrate it, but that's you know two fixes to classic 80s games that will be in the next release, and that's happening all the time, all the time in main there are, there are fixes, some more important than others, some affect gameplay like the, the control one, some are visual, some are audio. Um, well, as I said, R09 the uh, the my. The My Arcade thing that just came out does have the bug, but I'm 99% sure if somebody dumps the ROM on that My Arcade arc unit, they'll probably find it's like a 20-year-old version of MAME because uh, we've seen that with the other My Arcade units. They claim to all be fully licensed, but they're not licensed the emulator. Um, Hamster's PS2 release I've not checked, but uh, say the Hamster Haunted Castle apparently used early MAME without licensing it. So it's possible that we'll have the same bug. I, I don't know. Somebody will have to check that. I don't have access to it, so I, I can't tell you. The Xbox Live Arcade version was mentioned on my Twitter, but again, I don't have access to it, so I've not played it. I don't, I've not tested it. So I don't know if it will be there on that. Um, if, if other people want to find those things out, then you know, uh, let me know, and I can add a comment about it or talk about it in another stream. But uh, all I can say is that Every old every old version of MAME until now has had that bug. The versions the version coming out at the end of the month will not have that bug. And hopefully no versions in the future will ever have that bug again because it, it's been fixed. Um, shall we go with a rising shooter for a little bit? Let's go with a battle back raid. Unlimited version. And you can imagine I'm going to be terrible at this, but uh, you'd be right. Eating. Uh, I think there was a fix that went in for the music timing on this or something. Uh, probably not something anybody's going to really notice that much, but uh, I can put in a fix recently, I think, for this one. Let's credit it. Normal. Now, the thing with the unlimited version is it, it, it has more unlocked and the counter stop 
it's removed or something like that. Although, unless you actually have a default EEPROM, nothing extra is unlocked, so I, I don't really know if they just ship with everything unlocked in the EEPROM. There's uh, conflicting information about that. But this is a game that really doesn't get as much credit as, say, Batrider. But I think it is, it is just as much fun. It's just a little less over the top, a little more traditional. But it's a solid 2D game. It's not like a Brave Blade that's sort of half 3D and kind of has an age as well. This is just solid 2D um, shooter from Horizon. Choose flying. I don't think it'll matter if I choose Flying Viper or any other ship. Uh, um, I'm not going to want CC it, Christian. I'm not good at these games. Uh, if, so if you want to see somebody who's good at shooters, make sure you're subscribed to Lord BBH on Twitch. Uh, he, he's doing, he used to do his main roulette streams, and recently he's been doing sort of one credit clears of games. And um, he did one credit clear of a Dodon Patchy. Only the first loop the other night. And, I, know, I mean, he's pulling in like uh, 200 odd viewers on his streams these days, and he does upload some of them to YouTube. But he is actually a really good player of the things. Unlike uh, me, I'm just a developer who can enjoy a lot of the games from an artistic point of view, study the game mechanics, but ultimately, yeah, I don't really have the reactions or concentration to play anything that well. It's easier if you, you know how to play it. I mean, this is this kind of is um, a bit close to Ibarra, really, the uh, the SH3 game. Okay, oh, I'm not usually this bad at this, but yeah, th this is to me this feels like the predecessor to Ibarra, which was the cave game on the SH3 hardware. Again, they got the the, um, the rising devs involved in there. In terms of the actual enemies you face. Big machines. I'll put a ball on in, in a minute, actually. Yeah, you do have to learn these games, uh, Christian. You have to practice some, practice, practice some more. If bar it does lack slowdowns in main, so it's more difficult than it should be. But the uh, PlayStation 2 port lacks slowdowns too, so Cave clearly didn't think it was a major thing. It's, it's certainly not like um, um, uh, some of the other games without slowdowns where, you know, the god modes where you, you just die. Now let's give it another credit. I'm not going to play this for too long because clearly my concentration levels are not there. <laughs> yeah, most cave games go for far too much money. Can I mean the Ibarra port's got a specific PS2 mode too? Although you can play it quite easily in emulators these days. Yeah, I'm going to play that one another day. It is. Um, now there's two versions of Ibarra, there's Ibarra and there's the Black Label version, and they're very different games. Let's just have a look at the regular version. The uh, Black Label version makes it more like a cave game than a, a rising game. Yeah, drop the bomb is usually a good good idea, isn't it? Um, I just want to put Ibarra on, because to me this feels kind of close to a back raid, more so than any of the other rising games. That might just be my personal opinion, but... But you see, it's got lots of robots there. I can't coin it up. Very metal themes, aside from that. Um, so, yeah, this is a good game, actually. Very busy screen though. You've got explosions going off everywhere. 
very quiet. You can see it's all tanks, it's all machinery. I think that's why it reminds me of Back Raid. Again, I'm doing really badly. I, I don't know. I think it's the very long missiles as well. These look at the shape of some of the bullets. They're missiles rather than individual pixels. Yeah, it's a beautiful game, this one. <laughs> this is the worst I've ever done at it. So obviously, it's a bit different in art style. It's not quite the same. It's a, but it's just something that, that to me connects the games more so than any other pair of rising games. I mean, it's it's more back raid than it is bat rider or Gallagher. I feel maybe it's the weaponry. But you know, you mini gun aiming at me. Let's pretend I haven't tried to play any of these games. Play them for yourself. You will do better than I'm doing. I, I honestly, I can complete the first level without actually dying sometimes, but uh, not today. I'm not playing it all well today. Yeah, I mean, these run well in main. They're, they're lacking the slowdowns, as I said. And that is an incredibly p complex problem to get right. But, uh, there you go. So you've got a big mechanical thing with big turrets. Yeah, she and Rai... She and Ryu and Dayu are basically related to each other. I mean, they're the same developers, too. Um, uh, there was recently, a, uh, a few days ago, a prototype of Dio Dump 2, although it seems to be a later prototype than the one that's already in MAME. I did briefly check it out, and it plays, from what I can say, see like the final game. The shot... I mean, in uh, the PS2 version of Contra, some of the shot, I mean, some of the shots go towards you anyway in the broken version of MAME, just a lot of the group ones go to the right... So I'm guessing if the mines go to the right, then the, the shots that go to the right in MAME are probably going to go to the right because it's it's all going through the same system. Unless none of the shots just go to the right. But um, if any of the shots are just heading to the right, then they've probably just not fixed it. Uh, like I say, Hamster did use old versions of MAME without any kind of permission on um, some of their PS2 releases. So it's probably just going to be MAME. I'd say if you study the video a bit more, you might see some more shots going to the right. I mean, if you look at the old MAME, not every shot goes to the right. All the mines go to the right, not every shot. So it kind of sounds like it might just be MAME, unless you're confirming some of the more of the shots go straight down and none of them just veer off to the right. Um, I, I'm not sure. I'll have to check out the video myself. Um, right, two and a half hours. Let's have a look at. Oh my God. From Atlas in 93. Hi, hi. Okay, um, maybe they did try and half fix it then? I don't know. I mean, it's all the same thing, so. Yeah, I mean, Hamster's current stuff is really good. And I think it's all fully licensed, fully original emulators that they developed. But the earlier stuff, I mean, they were sort of on a dot .mu level of using things without permission or getting getting teams to do it without permission, unfortunately. Um, I don't know if they developed them all in-house and just used MAME knowingly or they got people to develop them for them and didn't know. Um, but yeah, these days, as far as I know, they, you know they, they've got a decent reputation. And they're doing a good job working with the, you know, doing things properly. 
And uh, sometimes, you know, these companies do improve. We've not seen that with the likes of Dream Gear, where they continually just put out absolute junk uh, that's not properly licensed with any of the emulators. Um, but the, I think in Japan, at least, they've started doing it more correctly. So this is sort of snake meets columns, pure, pure, more so columns, I guess. And it's called Oh My God, which is probably the most memorable thing about it for most people. But it's actually a good fun puzzle game, this one. But it's sort of got to position things by moving the snake around, which is really different to how, you know, piece matching works in most puzzle games. Or piece dropping, should I say. Matching is fairly standard. You get three in a row or more and they vanish. Diagonal, horizontal, or vertical. But you're not dealing with a, a standard shape to drop. You're dealing with snakes. So if I want the red at the bottom, I've got to make sure the tail of the snake's at the bottom and I fail to do that. So I'm in real trouble now. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to fail this. Um, Obviously, you're dropping a lot of pieces at once as well here, so you have to be really careful. Let's go down here and get rid of this one. Get rid of that one. Yeah, this is difficult. This is not an easy game to play. Although, yeah, it'll just be early May, Mario 09. It's what they've done with other things. To say Haunted Castles absolutely confirmed the hamster release was early May. It's a shame, but I'm just glad, you know, the, the more recent stuff is, is being done to a better standard, not just, you know, stealing old main code. Um... Nope. Yeah, this is a great aesthetic. I really like this. I mean, if you don't implement the math unit, you will get that behaviour, but since we've seen it with the older hamster things before, I think it's a fairly safe bet the old hamster PS2 release is just going to be old main, uh, based on what you said. This font reminds me of the IGS games, wide, but not very tall. But anyway, this is Oh My God. Good fun puzzle game. Unique look. And now most people remember it just for the way it says Oh My God when you lose. I quite enjoy it. It's very difficult, or at least it, I find it difficult. I tend to throw a semicom game or two into a stream so topping wrapping 96 now I'm just getting through the games quite quickly at this point um, the Capcom arcade stick yeah that's another case of them um, using things they shouldn't have used in that case you know uh, I think Barry was misrepresenting the, the final burn license and um, I mean that wasn't Capcom themselves, that was uh, Cock Media wasn't it? But Capcom provided Cock Media with the licenses and Cock Media went to Barry and Barry said oh yeah you can use final burn, uh, I'll represent final burn and um, really shouldn't be able to do that because final burn is non-commercial and is full of you know old non-commercial main code. It's a bit of a mess. And they kept promising to release sources and do things properly and whatever else. And I don't know if they ever did. I mean, I've never seen the full sources to it. But I've not looked since. So, I mean, I think it even included RetroArch GPL3 without proper sources, didn't it? 
It's just a mess of a product. But you get it so often. You, you see all these arcade cabinet builders and they're still shipping old versions of MAME without any licenses. And you question them about it and they say, oh, it's all fully licensed. And it's like, well, it's not. And then they find out, you know, I'm involved in MAME and I, I know they've not licensed MAME. And then I'll be blocked from all their social medias. And uh, yeah, that, that seems to happen far too often. Because the thing is, you know, uh, since I do a lot of emulation work, I'll end up with the targeted adverts for these products. And I'll see the targeted adverts, I'll look into them, it's like, well, yeah, I, I, I'll ask them, oh, did you license main from the main developers? It's like, yeah, we licensed main from the main developers. It's like, what version of main are you using? Oh, you know, uh, 2003. It's like, okay, you can't license 2003. Oh, we licensed 2003 from the main developers. And then, uh, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll twig on that I know they didn't and block me. Um, is it a great piece of hardware? It looks really uncomfortable, Carlo. And it's a really underpowered piece of hardware in there because it struggles to run Final Burn at full speed. So maybe the sticks are alright, or the buttons are alright, but it's not something I want to own personally. It looks like it'd be a nice display piece to put on the shelf. That's about the best I can say about the arcade stick. And um, obviously being old versions of Final Burn, it doesn't have the quality CPS2 sound for things like Alien vs Predator that's in the latest versions of MAME. So the emulation is a bit shoddy too. But yeah, this is a fairly generic single screen platform game. I, I This to me feels like the sequel to Metal Saver. And it's never officially branded as the sequel to Metal Saver, but Metal Saver is a game that Semicom developed before they were Semicom. Um, I think it was United Amusements or something like that. But it's got a similar, similar feel to it. Unfortunately, it's quite difficult to know what's going to kill you and what isn't. Things unfreeze without you realising they're not unfreeze. Um, sort of beat them up, uh, sort of stun things, then melee attacks by holding down directions. It's not too bad, but a little bit generic. Also, the final boss on this is um, Hyper Pac Man. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you're still going to have to be using old version of emulators though, because it's a really underpowered piece of hardware, and unless you actually replace the board in the, the unit. I mean, you know, you're going to be running an old version of Final Burn that's no good, or you're going to be running main 2003 that's absolutely terrible. I mean, I, I don't understand how anybody uh, puts up with things like main 2003. It's just so bad. Um, there's so many bugs, so many things wrong in it. Terrible thing. Yeah, oh, the, the recent one that was licensed properly. Yeah, that's. Uh, I don't think they use Mame as a single product in that. I, you know, a, a, the final, a, a whole thing that just. I don't think they just took Mame. I think they use components of Mame because if you look at the, what's licensing, the licensing text. It's very specific to individual components. But yeah, it was good to see everything properly licensed there. It's just a shame about the product in the end. Um, they, they really did a bad job with the sound. And it was a bit laggy in certain modes, but that might be down to the switch as much as anything. Uh, but you know, with the uh, recent main sound relicensing, they could have they could use, if they wanted to update the product, they could use the, the updated sound cores and fix most of their sound issues. Assuming that you know the, the performance wasn't borderline to the point where that's not possible, because I think the new sound cards cores are slightly more demanding. But yeah, unfortunately, yeah, you know, it's the exception. People have been abusing the emulators for a long time. I mean, there was that Neo Geo handheld thing that was the same, wasn't that? Was Final Burn? It was a Neo Geo X. I can't remember. And like I say, all the Dream Gear ones that are use arcade ROMs seem to be. 
old versions of Main, all the arcade cabinet builders. I'm hearing like things like Antstream. I, d I don't know if they use Main, but I'm hearing that whatever they are using has got bugs associated with the old versions of Main. And again, these these are people who should be doing better. But I think the, the you know the slight increased cost of using hardware capable of running new Main. They're more willing to take the risk of knowing that we don't have the money to, um, you know, drag them through courts, which is really not a nice way to be going with it, especially when we're putting so much effort to make sure everything is properly licensable. This boss takes a lot of shots. I know it's uh, an old beardy tiger, but... Uh, I feel like I'm missing something, but probably not. Do you get all this help? How many shots does this take? Too many is the answer to the question. I think the boss is a bit cheap. I'm going to say that now. I think the boss is a little bit cheap. You can't possibly do this with a normal time, can you? Unless I'm missing something. Uh, yeah, yeah, let's get all the orbs. I do like Semicom games. This isn't the best. Not the worst either, but definitely not the best. So we've got an underwater level. Let's see, I can save state it. I've got a new thing to do on the next underwater stream. Yay! I'll probably forget entirely. Um, but you know, I can lo lo launch it straight to that state now. You can see, it's from the command line, state naught. If I remember. Because I do want to do sort of uh, theme levels as well, like ice theme levels, underwater theme levels. Because as much as as nice as it is to cover underwater games as a whole, there are some really good looking underwater level games in games that otherwise aren't underwater level underwater games. And uh, one of those ideas that's brewing in my head is just to create a you know save states before certain levels in in games that demonstrate a theme, because many games go through themes like that. Xbox Series X emulation. Um, do you mean that the platform is basically open in the sense that if you pay Microsoft a fee, you can run your own software on it? In that case, you know, you've got a budget PC, basically, haven't you? Um, it'll be surpassed by a proper PC if it's not already. It's an option... I'd rather use a PC where you're not having to pay Microsoft to run your own software on a machine. Um, there are worse options, there are better options. I tend to think if you've got a games console like that, you buy it for the games that are on the console. I mean, it's like people, people are still using original Xboxes for emulation. The best thing you can do with an original Xbox at this point in time is is run original Xbox games, because it's the best way to run most of those, uh, where there are far better ways to run emulators. Um, and I mean, I'm not a big fan of emulation on consoles. Um, anyway, uh, China Gate, another Technos game. Let's see. There were many, many requests for this one to be emulated before it was emulated. Apparently this was a very popular game back in the day. That's also the title, I believe, in Japan the Japanese title. 
on there. Now it's got that classic Technos rather slow frame rate like you see with Double Dragon. In fact, it's very Double Dragon like, isn't it? Sound effects and everything else. Even the visual style, but the, the, uh, the frame rate is very Technos. This is one of those that uses weird custom modules for the ROMs as well. So, uh, you know, uh, early emulation was based entirely on bootleg ROMs because the bootleggers found a way to extract them. It kind of reminds me of Rodland in the way that you're throwing enemies over your head, although you don't juggle them backwards and forwards like you do in Rodland, you just throw them into each other. Yeah, it's still a budget CP it's still a budget PC really though. I mean, it might sound impressive for now, but a year from now it's it's not gonna be that impressive at all. And it's still not outperforming the top end um, PCs for emulation. Not by a long shot. Um I mean, it's 8-bit hardware, but it, it, I mean, the, the video hardware is fine, so I think a lot of it's coding, or Technos just didn't think uh, 60 frames a second was that important. But yeah, I think most of the Technos games could run better, but I think they're just not that well programmed. Also, I've forgotten how to play this one. I mean, some of it I think is intentional, but then you look at Double Dragon and how, how much it slows down, and yeah, it's uh, it's not that excusable. Even like WWF uh, Superstars, which has got 16-bit CPU, has a really bad frame rate, really. I think Technos just weren't actually that good of a developer at the time. Um... It's got some okay artists, it's got a, a style to it, We've got some decent game ideas, but the execution of them was usually lacking. But, you know, they are well loved as for Double Dragon. And this, apparently, many people remembered, although again, it seems to fall out of favour, nobody really talks about this anymore one of those that sort of just exists now rather than one that people talk about playing. You can see why it's a little bit mindless. You, you hit things at the right time. You avoid things. The controls are a bit laggy. And with the Dual Dragon, the bootleggers managed to make it run faster than the original developers just by uh, having a different protection CPU from what I can tell. So Double Dragon was crippled by its own protection. I don't know. I mean, I'm not really an Xbox person, Carlo. I tend to stick with the uh, the Sony stuff for games. I thought the previous Xbox was very disappointing. And even with consoles, I tend to use older ones. I'm only just starting to play stuff on the PS4. I'm not really a console person. My brother's got the PS5, which, you know, seems impressive to me. I do like how Microsoft have opened up the the new Xbox, in some senses, but it still requires, you know, permission and subscription as far as I remember, as far as I know. You need a dev, dev account, don't you, or something. Yeah, the Double Dragon on the NES is, is a better game. Though single player only from what I remember. So it's not really double dragon, is it? Yeah, this is uh, hit the enemy a few times, throw the enemy over your head. It's not, it's not too bad. I think you're meant to play at a slightly slower pace as well. Get the attacks in when they matter. Uh, could could you could you could hit me with a blessing? Um, okay, uh, Pedro, you have my uh, blessing. Um, you know, I have shaved the beard off a little bit, but um, 
my powers to bless you are probably not uh, correlated to, to beard length. So, you know, you have my blessing then. Um, and I, I, I don't need hail hazers because that will probably just end up with a hailstorm outside or something instead. And we don't need a hailstorm right now because then I'll have to do another snow, ice and rain and water and hail and apocalypse theme. And I'm kind of not in the mood for doing an end of world apocalypse theme right now. Um, Rodland is another one, though. Ingu that is better on the uh, the home systems. I wish the Amiga emulation worked better in MAME so that I could run the Amiga version of Rodland because it's just a better game than the arcade version. Unfortunately, it doesn't work in in MAME, um, which is a shame. But yeah, happens. Shall we finish the stream for the last ten minutes with a run and gun? Yeah, Rodland had better home ports than the arcade version. Uh, just for the fact that I think on the home ports you can move off the top of the screen where the um, the arcade version doesn't let you. Which makes climbing ladders at the top annoying. You can't avoid enemies as easily. Um... I can't read what you've put, Bob. Yeah, I, I mean, I think the general consensus is that Rodland is better on the home system. The arcade's got a ton of slowdown too. I mean, it's, again, it's really badly programmed. You've got dual 68Ks and the game crawls. The game absolutely crawls along and glitches out the sprites. Even on original hardware, it's, it's a mess. Call it purple and we will have purple haze. Are you talking about my MAME haze logo? I was tempted. I mean, I I sort of like to vary the colour on the logo just to separate the streams a bit. The um, the April alternatives ones are going to be red. Uh, this one just this is something different, so I call it green. Oh, um, it was China, China's Gate Game Over message. Okay, Bob. I didn't sort of, does it mean game over or does it mean you suck at this game and you shouldn't ever play it again because you're terrible at this game? Um, I wish Bootleg of Double Dragon doesn't have so much slowdown. I'm not sure. Uh, I think I think it's one of the emulated ones, although there are lots of them. But they do have different protection MCUs and from what I was told. Uh, one of them doesn't have quite as much slowdown, although uh, it's not a game played in the you know. Demon Front. So, Demon Front. If you played Metal Slug and not played Demon Front, uh, do yourself a favour and play Demon Front. Oh, colour my beard purple, Carlo. I've coloured my hair purple before. Um, not so much my beard. I'm tempted. Um, if you've seen my um, Monster Hunter World character on the PS4, I've got nice purple hair there and uh, green sideburns. Well, <laughs> um, I, you know, I, I played Monster Hunter World a bit extensively to get the um, the 50 Guild Card trophy the other other week, and I'm taking a little break from it. I don't like having to spam people with a quest to send guild cards. And now there's all the other trophies that maybe I'll get one day, like um, gold crowns for every monster that's entirely RNG-based and probably takes about 500 hours. I actually prefer this over some of the Metal Slug games, Carlo. I think IGS did a fantastic job here. And it's it, it's distinct enough to not just feel like Metal Slug, even though clearly a lot of the animations are traced from Metal Slug. Because you've got your whole, um, you know, your assistant character cute pet thing. But yeah, in some senses it's very much Metal Slug. But then you've got your, your, your shield, that your pet does. Yeah, it, it's and it, you can tell it, it, it's influenced by Metal Slug. If uh, 
If SNK had dragged IGS to court, I, I think it would have been no contest, and yet you, you trace the graphics, you copy that gameplay. Um, but it, it's just it's done really well. And if you do something, if you you, know, you you make a game that like this that is clearly similar but distinct in its own way, you do a good job. But you put the effort in, which this does. I mean, it's good from start to end. It doesn't start to feel like a filler game at any point. Then it deserves its own place in history. Most games are influenced by other games, as we've seen in these. Um, these streams we've talked about oh, was this the first game to do this idea was this the first game to do this idea um, clearly the theme here is very different to Metal Slug but the weaponry the animations many things are obviously similar it runs smoother than Metal Slug if you've not noticed this one's at a smooth uh, pardon me a smooth 60 frames a second whereas Metal Slug was run at like 30 so technically, this is um, a both metal slug. And it is on arm based uh, hardware. Because the entire game runs on the uh, protection arm rather than 68k. 68k just transfers a uh, sprite just like it's on the gladiator and use the inputs. Um, yeah, technically, it's really impressive. Yeah, this, this is great. And, uh, you know. Um, I'm not surprised you have the cartridge mass ninja. It's definitely one to own. <laughs> it's got the, it's got the humour there, Metal Slug too. You see, I jumped on the, the board, and instead of springing the boulder into the air, the board snapped. It's got and, and Metal Slug Four like that. This is a far better game than Metal Slug Four, and it came out around the same time as Metal Slug Four, I think. So yeah, uh, <laughs> maybe SNK Playmore should have got um, IGS to do Metal Slug 4, or even 5. I think it would have been a better job than the actual games that came out. Some of those explosions do look straight from Metal Slug though. I mean, that's uh, some of them don't even look just trace. They look like the Metal Slug explosions. Yeah, and that's exactly what this does, Arunan. It, it takes ideas, pacing, and everything else from Metal Slug, adds its own ideas, gives it an entirely unique theme, and it works. I mean, I'd say, along with the Gladiator, this is, you know, IGS's best work. And uh, probably the good way to end the stream. I mean, we're on three hours now, so I'll give this another credit or two, and then I'll uh, end up um, closing down the stream, I think. Ice blast weapon. Yeah, this. You know, this this to me is every much as quality as anything K put out, anything SNK put out. It's an excellent arcade game, and it's an arcade exclusive. It didn't get ported either, which is a real shame because you know this on Xbox Live Arcade or anything like that. I'm sure it would have sold a, a, a ton. Metal Slug game by NG Dev. Um, I've not played much NG Dev stuff uh, because most of it's not emulated and it's not affordable. Um, they did that Turrican rip off that seemed alright from what I could see. I don't know. It'd be nice to see some of the NG Dev stuff emulated to get a better idea of what they're doing. I mean, the thing is, I'm, unless some of the early NG Dev stuff gets emulated, I'm not going to go out my way to splash out on. A new Big game. Well, I'm not really sure of their history. Big traditional life bar. You see, Metal Slug didn't have life bars. You've got a traditional arcade style life bar, and the art style is very different. Here, it's much more organic. Look, that looks look like a rock monster, slightly slimy. Not a big metallic machine.
get your combo meat all the time. Yes, I'll continue. Obviously, I'm terrible at this, but. Uh... Uh, oh, yeah, Crabbuster. Sorry, I, I completely forgot about that game. I thought you were talking about one they had coming out soon. Um, like I said, their games tend to just fall off the radar. They're not emulated. They're not readily available on any platforms they've got. They just... they, they exist. Um, I don't know how good crap was this. I don't think I've even read a review of it. I just kind of forgot about the game. Forgot about the game. I am bad at this game. Um, I don't know. Um, we'll see. I I have a look at R-Type Final Two. Um. If it gets a physical release on a platform I've got, then yes. If it's digital only, then no, basically. That's my rule. If something's digital only, I'm not going to buy it. If it's physical only and it's limited edition to the point where the copies are, you know, $200, I'm also not going to buy it. Um, basically, my rule is if a game costs more than $40, like 35 quid, um, it's I'm not going to get that much out of it. So, you know, if they want to price me out of their games, unfortunately, sometimes that will happen. Well, I, I don't buy things if I'm not going to happen in the future, so again, digital is out of the question. I want a collection that I can pass down to somebody at some point. Yeah, anyway, uh, Demon Front. I, I'll probably play that more in another stream. Because it's a really good game. But I am over the three hour mark now. I've shown the Contra Bug fix that I wanted to show twice. So. Yeah. <laughs> the machine gun shells are popping out the back end of that floating rabbit. Hey, yeah. It um, did look about a bit like that, didn't it, Bob? Uh, yeah, character design's lovely, Christian. Um, it's, it's, again, it's one of those really appealing art designs. Um, I said uh, Doggy and had nice curves and natural looking graphics and um, I feel the same way about uh, Demon Front in a different way. It doesn't all look mechanical like Metal Slug and as much as you know, I love that IVM art style that we talked about earlier um, and the, the SNK where, where, you know, Nazca Metal Slugs it's always good to have great alternative art styles um, Dolphin Blue Mass Ninja I didn't actually think that much of I played it one once or twice on uh, one of the Dreamcast emulators and thought it's okay. Um, I'd, I'd say uh, Demon Front was a far better game. Uh, come the day Naomi ends up playable, speeds in main with correct graphics, I might give um, uh, Dolphin Blue another try. You want another viewing of the Contra Bill fix? Um, you brought back. I mean, there's probably about 500 PS3 games behind me. Uh, but they're all disc ones because I'll happily buy a disc game, but uh, digital games I don't really buy. They've got some really obscure PS3 games back there. Um, <laughs> some terrible ones. Somehow I've ended up with like Tony Hawk's 5 on disc, even though. Um... <laughs> you don't want a third viewing then, Bob. Okay. I mean, I, I could do it now. I, I, think I'll, I think I'll probably um, call the stream there. Yeah, as you see, as we see, like the the, the uh, PlayStation still shooting down, the Wii still shooting down. Those digital purchases are only going to be there as long as the stores are. I mean, Sony have said that you used to be able to download your games for a while, but how long's a while? Um, and even some of the games that aren't online require authentication. You know, 
you, they need an account to function properly and if you can't create an account anymore because that goes away what happens it's a bit of a mess this this current generation so we'll be looking to emulation in the future for a lot of that or you know ways of hacking the machines and not all the machines can be fully hacked yet it's a mess uh, but yeah I'd, I'd rather have something physical that i can pass down and um too many things aren't these days mm. So, you know, we'll see what happens. Um, I'm just hoping people are kind of twigging onto this and are going to make more of a point of, of wanting things on disc. At least the PS4 has got a lot more indie games, you know, uh, on disc than the PS3. You had a lot of the PS3 live with the best games. The smaller games are, were digital only. You can't buy them on disc, which is a real shame. And then a lot of the big ones were. I mean, Yakuza 5 was digital only apart from Japan. It's like, I wanted it on disc. I wanted to buy it. <laughs> it's it's a mess, not a mame. Um I mean, mess is a former thing that no longer exists. So if it could become a meme, not a meme, I don't know. I'm rambling and ranting, but uh, yeah, digital markets, even just in terms of updates, it would be lovely if I could download all the updates of the PlayStation games I've got, all the DLC, put one on a USB stick, plug that into the PlayStation and be done. Not, oh, I've got to reformat the PlayStation, I've got to download another 60 gig of updates because I got rid of them. It's it's annoying. You you want Even on a console, you want more control over that. You want more future-proofing over that. You don't want things tied to accounts. You don't want things that are going to be there that you can use that are going to work. And I look at some of the games I've got on disc and the state they're in when they were released, and they're really bad and unplayable. So if the update servers go away then they're going to be stuck in that unplayable state. We'll see what happens. I, we count on emulation, basically, I think. But, uh, <laughs> there are PS3 emulators, or at least one, that's starting to do a reasonably good job. I wonder if that'll adopt the CHD format for PS3 discs too, because so many emulators are these days. It'd be quite nice if it did, I think, because you could probably install the encryption key in the CHD metadata, and then store the unencrypted dump so it compresses better. It probably makes sense if they did, but I think I think the PS3 emulator is just running extracted files at the moment, unfortunately. Uh, anyway, that's not really the uh, the topic of conversation here, is it? Is it? Um, but again, thank you to everybody who's joined. It's been really good chatting with everybody, and I hope you've enjoyed seeing the bug fix and some random games I played and. If anybody's been watching and thinking, oh yeah, I'd like to really fix that art Leo bug that I showed earlier, please, please do go ahead and have a look at it. I, I'd love to see something like that fixed. And I've run out of ideas myself. And maybe a fresh pair of eyes is all it needs. Uh, that could be the case. We say we saw that with Contra. Fresh pair of eyes on it. Somebody did a chip decap. And something that should have been obvious. Getting fixed. Um, so yeah, anyway. I will say good night to everybody, and if it's not quite evening yet, enjoy the rest of your day. If it's um, evening, heading on night, as it is here, I hope you manage to sleep well and uh, feel refreshed tomorrow morning. And it's a Friday tomorrow, almost the weekend. I uh, don't know if I'll be streaming tomorrow. I'm usually watching streams on a Friday, but we'll, we'll see. I might throw another alternative stream in an hour or two. We'll, we'll see. So, anyway... Good night, everybody, and, and thank you for joining. It's It's been good. As always, take care. Say uh, good night. Good night, Christian. Good night, Bob. Ingu, Aaron, Carlo, uh, Mass Ninja 09. I'm scrolling back. Pedro, Cow, Santeri, who was early here, uh, here earlier. I might still be watching. I don't know. Wolf has. You know, there's been a lot of you, and you know, we're we're starting to get a, a good. Oh, Mr. Dream as well. Sorry, I, I forgot to greet you. We're starting to see a good number of people. I mean, uh, I think uh, it was about thirty people watching at the same time last week, which is really good and not something I expect at all. So, uh, thank you to everybody. It, it it all helps and helping get the word out. So, so that. So, good night. Thank you. Take care. <laughs>